Good evening and welcome in to another edition of High School Football here on Keon Sports. We are in Olmstead Falls where the 1-0 Bulldogs host the 1-0 Avon Eagles. I'm Cole McDaniel. Alongside me is my broadcast partner, the owner, the president, the man here at Keon Sports, Vince McKee. Vince, good to be with you. I know we're excited for this game this evening. Cole McDaniel, the man I call Eagle Eyes. That welcome was too much, but I thank you for it. I'm going to need you to tell Emily that later. She asked me to take out the garbage. Listen, guys, as we talked about the pregame show on Facebook Live, what a game we have for you tonight. Two of the best teams year in, year out in the SWC. Olmstead Falls washed away Midview last week, 34-7. to Me and Cole were there to see it. Obviously, Avon in the game of the weekend. A lot of people were, were clinging to it. It went off a day late, but it was Avon versus Avon Lake. Avon, the big comeback. And tonight, Cole, we're really going to see the true Avon Eagles team. And we're also going to see if Olmstead Falls could play a full game of rushing and passing because they're going to need to establish that pass. And that we will. We saw with Olmstead Falls a lot of success running the ball last week. They had no issue with that. As you mentioned uh, when we did our Facebook Live earlier, they might have to pass the ball a little bit more this week. They only did three total times last week, two completions and incompletion. So we'll see if they throw the ball a little bit more. As for Avon, Devin Hunter, their running back, they like to run the ball with him. But Nico Pappas, the senior quarterback, came out, and he was the one who really lit up Avon Lake in that comeback last weekend. With his legs and his arm, the kid could do it all. Reminds me a little bit of Ryan Malloy from a few years ago. You Avon Eagles fans, you know all about Ryan Malloy, and he shows those same tendencies. And Nicole, we are ready for kickoff. And we are here at kickoff. And it will be Olmstead Falls receiving the ball first. Olmstead Falls in their dark blue uniforms with their gold numerals. And Avon with the white jerseys, with the gold pants and the gold helmets. The kick is up into the end zone. And we've got a fair catch by Rocco Connie as we start this game. So Charlie Sielek will come out and lead that Olmstead Falls offense. And they're going to have uh, quite a length of the field to go here as they come out to start this drive, Vince. And it's a matter of seeing what this Avon defense go is going to do. As you mentioned in that Facebook Live, mm -hmm. the first half and the second half with the defense was a little bit different uh, going up against Avon Lake. So what's your point there? Cole, I just want to bring it to you real quick, too. We mentioned Seolik's passing, how we only threw mm -hmm. three passes, but again, he fumbled it uh, seven times at Seolik. Maybe those were passing plays. We're going to find out real quick. In that triple option formation, they like to run the ball. As we mentioned, Seolik with an early fake is the first snaps underway. He finds Conti. Conti up to the 40, and he stays in bounds. Looks like his foot was on the line. They say no. He gets into opponent territory, and Conti won't go down. The sophomore slot receiver caught the ball and would not be brought down. He dodged about six tacklers there. Impressive after catch. Running there uh, by Conti. Unbelievable fancy footwork on the sidelines there. Cole, I have to agree with you. There was a couple times where I thought he might have stepped out of bounds. Left in and see it. Big 55-yard pickup to start the game for the Bulldogs. Here's the second play of the game. Another pass. Quick out to Conti. Not much there. About two yards. So the first two plays of the game for the Olmstead Falls Bulldogs offense have been passes from Seolik. So we saw three total last week. We've already seen two in the first two plays. Yeah, unbelievable. And I, got, I have to believe they worked on that this week in practice. Wanted to come out, maybe do something a little bit different right off the bat. Keep that Eagles defense honest. Keep them from stacking eight in the box. Parkowski right behind Siolik. Fakes the handoff to Parkowski. Siolik keeps it. Quick tackle. He just spun out and maybe gained a yard or two there. Yeah, and still has got some size to him too, guys. You know, one thing he could do, you know, a kid that big listed on the roster is 6'4". He, he's mobile. You know, he's not the kind of guy who's going to try to drop back. I mean, he is the quarterback of this offense for a reason. Coach Lugo likes to run that triple option. Third and three for the Bulldogs on the 19-yard line. Ciola hands it off to Parkowski. Parkowski powers up the middle. That one's going to be close to the yard marker. We'll see if the officials give it to them. Cole, I got him about a yard short. Let's see how they, like you said, how they rough it, but it looks like about a yard short. And they are going to move the chains. And from up here, it did look maybe a couple inches short, but it was close, and the Bulldogs 
having a good opening drive right now against Avon. Absolutely. Took over, you know, after that uh, touchback, and they're rolling right down the field, my man. See so a look under center once again. He pitches it. Viskanich gets to the 10 yard line. And that's something we saw Fiskanish do last week. He took a couple pitches to that right-hand side. Actually, his yep. two touchdowns were, were pitches to that right-hand side. Only five yards there, well defended on the edge in the perimeter by the Eagles. You're absolutely correct, my friend. That is what he did best last week, as we saw Parkowski blow through the middle, Fiskanich on some sweeps, and Conti doing a little bit of everything. Under 10 minutes here in the first quarter. Second and five from the 10. Conti motions out to the left-hand side. Siola gets the snap, a fumble, and that was one of those late decisions. I think he was trying to give it to Parkowski. Yeah, Parkowski went to run with the ball, didn't think Siola was going to give it to him, and uh, that was just the timing off there, and we saw the ball hit the ground once again like we saw last week. A little differently, though. That's why you're the best play-by-play -play man in the business, because I would have said, hand off Parkowski out the middle, because <laughs> it really looked like you gave him that ball. Hey, Siola quickly jumped back on the ball, third and five at the 10-yard line. Waiting for the snap. Siolek back to pass. Throws it to the corner. A jump ball. Jimmy Cooney. The senior wide receiver comes down with it in the Bulldog strike first at home. Unbelievable there. Like you said, jump ball. Cooney went up. Yanked it down. And at first, when it first left his hands, Carl, I thought it was going to be intercepted. I did. But that unbelievable leaping ability out of Cooney. And I believe the defensive back got sucked in a little bit there. And as Siolek floated it up. It was good location. I think he just underthrew it a little bit. I think you're right. Uh, but the defensive back who got sucked in was not able to get to it. And a good job by Cooney to bring it down. Now for the PAT attempt and a fake. Parkowski at the middle, and there's a two point conversion. Wow, what a play there, and what a call from Coach Tom DeLuca. And the Bulldogs lead this game eight to nothing after the first drive. We still got nine minutes left to go here in the first quarter. You're listening to KeyOnSports.com. That's K-E-E on sports.com. Cole McDaniels and Vince McKee. Minus that's Cole McDaniel and Vince McKee here with you. As Cole just said, wow. And when you when you came in early on tonight, fans, and you looked at us and what we were trying to tell you on Facebook Live, one of those things I said on Facebook Live is I said, hey, if Olmstead Falls takes that early lead, can they build upon it? Can they hold it? Can they play with the lead? I'll tell you what, Coach Luka not messing around, going for two. Beautiful fake there, Parkowski right up the middle. And I'll tell you what, this team, Cole, they are not intimidated. No, they aren't. It's a, it's a good team, and they're usually a good program. They're improved from last year, as we talked about last week. And this is a game where I feel like this could be a very close one. I felt that earlier today coming into this. I just have a gut feeling this is going to be a tough and close game. So that touchdown was going from left to right on our radio dial, and now the kick would be down going the opposite direction, which means is Avon will be coming from the right to left here on our radio dial. And we have number 18, Drew Kanaba, to kick and ready to send this one away. And that one, a low line drive off to the far side of the field, and that one's going to skip out of bounds around the 10-yard line, and a legal procedure will come out. Avon will come out with the football. Again, Nico Pappas is their senior quarterback. He leads the offense. Had a really big game last weekend versus Avon Lake in their comeback win. Devin Hunter, the senior running back, also got to watch out for a guy that they really like to power the ball up the middle with. Uh, he's a star running back. And we'll see how much Avon uses him or if they're going to try to go quickly to the passing game and try to cut back into this deficit they're facing early in the game. Absolutely. Some that want, you know, we're going to watch for it right away. And here we are in formation with four spread. Pappas takes a snap. He drops back. He's looking down the field. Pressure by the defense. Fans want to hold. And he's able to complete the pass up to Cam Erskine, the senior wide receiver. Good job by Erskine to get two feet in there. That one would have been good in the NFL. But again, the fans here really wanted that hold in the backfield. Yeah, I mean, great job again with that footwork to get in. Pappas right down the field. Here we go, Eagles. The Eagles in opponent's territory. Fakes the handoff, a pitch out here to Erskine. Erskine cuts in. Quickly brought down. That's number 35, Nick Hearn. The defensive back coming up from the safety position and a great tackle there. 
by the Bulldogs. Yeah, they snuffed that right out. They read that all the way, did that phenomenal Bulldogs defense. Didn't even give them a second to breathe. Pappas looking over the sideline to get the call in for the play. Eight minutes and 30 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. Bulldogs with an 8-0 lead. Pappas back in the gun. Ball snapped. He drops back, looking deep. Nobody there. He's got a scramble. And he's going to get maybe a couple yards there. It looks like the official on the far side gave him an extra yard or two. But the near side official corrected that, and it's a gain of four. Hell of a job there by Pappas, remaining under control, showing that poise that he did last week as well. Cole, he got flushed out. Unlike Ethan Surdock last week, he did not go down. I mean, he just kept going straight, found his way through that line. Yeah, and the one thing is the Bulldogs' defensive line was much more physical than Midview's offensive line. Avon's got some more size here tonight. Expect them to do a better job of protecting their quarterback. Third and six at the 42. Handoff up the middle. Devin Hunter rumbling through the middle and looked like he was possibly going to take that to the house but got tripped up from behind. Yep. But that moves the chains. First down now for the Eagles. Incredible shoestring tackle there. and That's what it was. Got grabbed by the ankle and the shoestring. If not, Cole, he'd still be running home to Mama. Pappas in the gun. Hunter to his right, pitches it off to Erskine, and a great job there by the defense. Again, Olmstead falls. That was number six, R.J. Simon, the defensive back. He fought through the blocker and was able to quickly make the tackle. Great job by the Bulldogs' defense in their secondary once again. Yep. <laughs> Not too much to add there. Just absolutely that they're flushing that play out. Pappas in the gun. Hunter to his left. Pops his hand, takes a snap, hands it off to Hunter. Hunter rumbling up the middle. And the football is on the ground, and we got a turnover. Yes, we did. Bulldogs recover the fumble. And that big hit, I believe, there by R.J. Simon. Wow. What a play by the Bulldogs defense in this crowd that is here tonight. They are getting loud already, Vince. Unbelievable. I mean, it doesn't take an expert to know that Devin Hunter, one of the best backs in the SWC, and really – a huge key to the Eagles' attack tonight. And for that to happen that early, it's a huge momentum boost for Olmstead Falls because, granted, it was only one run. But even after that first run, Cole Hunter was looking good. So, yeah, that, that's big. That's real big. So, big play. Not only did the Bulldogs come out and fight hard and really throw the Eagles off quickly on offense, on defense, they respond as well. And Avon can't capitalize on their first drive. Now, after the snap, we've got Penalty markers on the ground. That's going to be a false start on the Bulldogs. And that's one of those little bits of sloppy mistakes that the Bulldogs would prefer to uh, avoid right after a turnover and coming out. And um, But that's only going to set them back five yards. going to be first and 15 from their own 24. Yeah, they got to avoid the, uh, the big-time mistakes yep. on first down, those penalties. Don't make the field any longer than it needs to be. And that's one where maybe the emotions and the hype of getting the ball back so quickly and stopping Avon kind of got everybody jumping to get back out there. The pitch out to Conti. Conti having to fight off some tacklers. And he's fighting hard for those yards. Maybe gain two or three there, but those were hard-earned yards. You know, when I said in my article a little bit earlier, he's kind of joking, as you know, me and Cole are huge Rocky Balboa fans. Said Conti is the best Italian puncher since Balboa. But, uh, you know, all joking aside, the kid could do it all. He showed you on that first drive with a couple of big catches, one for 55 yards. So, Connie, another guy to watch. So, look under center. He keeps it, rolling off to his left hand side and brought down after a couple yard gain. And it's going to be third down now for the Bulldogs as they're trying to capitalize on this drive following the huge turnover just a moment ago. Yeah, Eagles uh, turned over elsewhere right now. Avon Lake up 7-0 early on against Berea Mid Park. We have our guy, Mark Thies, there for that one. Follow that recap later tonight. Three wide here to the near side of the field. Parkowski behind Siolik. A pitch out and a stumble there. That was tossed out to Jack Pinchek in the slot. And he just tripped over his own feet there, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. And the Bulldogs' offense sputters after the turnover. Yeah, sure did. Jack Pinchak might have had a little something there if he could have stayed on his feet, maybe wiggled and waggled there for a couple extra yards. But as it is, Cole, 
Avon, excuse me, Olmstead Falls could not capitalize on that. Again, I'm Cole McDaniel here with Vince McKee as we're here covering the Olmstead Falls Bulldogs versus the Avon Eagles on Keon Sports. Make sure to check us out on keonsports.com. The punt is away for the Bulldogs. Back deep. It's returned by the Eagles. Coming forward and getting some yards off to the right-hand side it was number 22, Mike Matlick. Yeah, Matlick, one of the big-time players last week in that huge comeback. Had some huge clutch catches for the Eagles last week in the save on Lake in that second half. And Matlack, definitely one of the guys they're going to need to get going with that passing tag alongside of Patase. Now, Cole, real quick, let me ask you this. Does Elder go immediately back to the run on the first play with Hunter get his confidence immediately back? What do you think? With a star running back like that, I would say yes. You want to get that confidence back. We'll see what happens here. It's going to be Pappas with Kerry Hunter out to block. And a quick job closing down on the ball carrier as Olmstead Falls defense again. They're flying to the ball right now. Yeah, they really are. Anything that's that's going left to right right now for uh, Avon does not seem to be working. They're, they're doing their damage up the middle of the field, quite frankly. It's early, though, Cole. It's early. Second and 10 from the 40. And we've got penalty markers down. It's going to be encroachment on the defense. Olmstead Falls will be penalized five yards for encroachment. And it's that hand clap there from Pappas. Threw them off. They all jumped. Again, a little antsy. Mm -hmm. Gets five yards to the Eagles. So it's second and five from the 45. Pappas back to throw. He's looking right down the oh, middle. Man. He's got a guy wide open, and that's Matlick, and he's going to take it to the house yep. for a 55-yard touchdown. Pappas to Matlick. And Cole, you can call me Nostradamus if you want to, but did I not just say a few moments ago, Matlick's going to be one of those guys that get him right back in it? You did. You did. Not only did he have a decent return to clear out some room, took it around the far side, but he got wide open right down the middle of the field. And now Avon is right back into this game. And Cole, he was open by a good five yards. So with five minutes left to go here in the first quarter, the Bulldogs are up eight to six over Avon. Avon looking for the PAT. It is up and it splits the uprights. And it is good by number 90, Nathaniel. Vekos. Yeah, Vekos showed that ice water in his veins last week. A huge kick in overtime. If he missed it, they would have lost. Nailed it. And it was actually him again kicking earlier in the game to, to cut it down to 24-10. They have a hell of a kicker on their hands with, with him. So to recap our drive so far, we've had four in total here in the first quarter. The Bulldogs quickly came out. They were able to put a touchdown on the board as well as a two-point conversion to make it eight points. The Eagles came back out, and Hunter had the ball stripped away from him. The Bulldogs took that away, and then they had a four and out, and excuse me, a three and out, and um, had to punt it away. And then the Eagles just responded to make it eight to seven. So again, with five minutes left to go here in the first quarter, that's where we stand. The Bulldogs here at home with that eight to seven lead. And again, like you said, they're on that drive. Not much to it. That big 55-yard touchdown pass to capitalize. Before that, they went backwards. So, again, quick strike offense. They can do whatever they want, it appears. It just seems like both of these teams are matching each other's energy levels at the moment. If this continues, we're going to be in for a good one here tonight. Vakos with the kick away. And it's up and all the way back at the end zone. Rocco Conti going to field it for a fair catch. And the Bulldogs offense will once again come back out from the 20-yard line just where they started on that first drive where they went the length of the field early in the first quarter. Quick score update for you. It's Lutheran East up 6-0 on Brush. Our uh, Tony Bogan there to cover it. O.C. Matnox connects with B.J. Busby for a 16-yard touchdown to reception. Follow us all night long at sports underscore key. Siolik under center. The handoff. And quickly surrounded. That was number 29, Michael Cando, a slot receiver who took the carry, but quickly surrounded. Got a three yard gain that will set up a second and seven from the 23. And Cole, they are deep. You know, we're going to see Pinchek, Cando, Fiskanich, Conti, Seolik, Parkowski, even Vormelker is going to get some carries tonight. 
DeLuca said it in the pregame, they're going to run a lot of backs. Siolik, back to pass. He's got Cooney wide open. Can he find him? He floats it. And he threw, overthrew him by about three or four yards. And I do have to say, as Cooney was looking back, it looked like he wasn't running full speed because he was trying to look back so far. So he was if, tilted. If Cooney would have continued running, he probably could have caught that and taken that to the house because he was wide open. Missed opportunity by the Bulldogs. Nobody near him on that play, Cole. Like you said, I'd, I'd, I'd be a little more generous. I'd even say maybe five or six yards away from the nearest yeah. kid. If he catches that... A little bit of both there, though. Siolik definitely overthrew him. But, yeah, you're right. He slowed down for a brief second and it cost him. Siolik rolling to his left. Looking to the pass. He floats it. And a great catch there by Ethan Williams, the senior wide receiver. He's able to get his fingertips on it and pull it in. And that moves the chains. A first down now for the Bulldogs. And, Cole, we're getting our answer, our answer early and often tonight. Will all set falls throw the ball? Can they throw the ball? The answer, yes, they can. Yes. It's an unconventional way that they do it. It is that triple option. You think of teams in college, Georgia Tech, uh, Army, Navy. You think of some of those schools, and they're used to doing it. But this is a team that not only can run it well, but they can pass as well. Seola takes a snap. He is able to make a move as he steps to his left, fights forward for a couple yards. That makes it a second and five from the 44. And a good job there, boss. You'll look to keep those legs pumping, breaking through that initial tackle. This is a kid, as we said, 6'4 on the roster, and he can move for a big man. Three minutes and 40 seconds here in the first quarter. Bulldog still with an 8 7 lead over the Avon Eagles. Yolik takes a snap. He handed off to Parkowski and quickly wrapped up by the Eagles defense. And that was Mike Matlick who came in for the tackle, was able to get him. He has been a big factor right now for the Eagles as he just scored that touchdown. And here he's making the tackles tonight. And as I had written earlier this week, Matlick, one of those guys, both sides of the ball, Cole. He can he do it all. Plays about 95% of the game. That's why he gets the headlines. Siolik pitches it. And we got some room to work and that was pick Pinchek and he was able to get the first down good job by Pinchek to keep brought himself in bounds not third. step out of bounds and Cavanero. was brought down after picking up the first down so again the when the Bulldogs start from their own 20 they seem to have no problem moving the duck ball right now no doubt about it and now we look at it too again Pinchek, Kandal, Kaskanich, Conti, Siolik, Parkowski have all ran the ball you're listening to high school football here on Keon Sports. You can check us out on KeonSports.com. Bulldogs have the ball. They're now in Eagles territory. And that was Siolek. He handed off to Parkowski up the middle and quickly stuffed. Not much running room for Parkowski yet tonight, but he did take the snap. Uh, he was the holder for that extra point attempt. He was the one who was able to run it up the middle for the two-point conversion. But in the flow of the offense, not much running room up the middle right now. Last week, too. You know, Parkowski had two touchdowns last week. When you, when you look at that stat sheet and you were here like me and Cole were, it wasn't the best of games just yet. Siolik takes the snap, rolling to his right. A quick throw and nearly intercepted. It, it looked like Siolik thought he had Ethan Williams wide open. He had an on-looking defender there. Nearly picked off, but Williams able to get his body in there. That's when the wide receiver plays a little bit of defense. Absolutely. Very, very dangerous throw there by Siolik. He is lucky he's not asking for that one back right now. Could have been a pick six. Third and eight from the Eagles, 39. Just over two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Siolik under center. Going from left to right. Quickly pressured, and he throws it straight into the arms of number 35. And that was Trevor Norman. Norman nearly had the pick. It looked like he was going to be able to pull that one in for the Eagles. Instead, it's going to be a punt, and uh, the Bulldogs are going to try to pull pin the Eagles down inside the 10. Yeah, and after that hot start where he hit passes of you know 55 yards and the 15-yard touchdown, his last offerings, minus a yard, incomplete, 17, incomplete, incomplete. Snap away and the punt's away. It's going to sail into the end zone. 
And the ball going to be brought out to the 20 as the Eagles are going to start their drive and look to take the lead for the first time tonight over the Bulldogs. Yep. Also, we'll remind everybody right now on Keon Sports Elite, it is North Olmstead at North Ridgeville. Our guys, Mike Rogers, Brandon Soder, Penner, and Jeff Lampshire on that call. Early on in that game, Anthony Garuccio with the QB keeper from four yards out puts North Olmstead on top, 7 nothing. They lead Ridgeville again early on in that first quarter. So on the last drive for the Eagles, they were able to get seven points. Pappas found Matlick over the middle of the field. We'll see what the Eagles do when they first come out. We'll see if they give the ball to Hunter or if they go right back to the passing game and see if they can get another quick touchdown. Got an offensive lineman. Move out to the outside. I would assume this means there's a screen. No, pass right down the middle to the tight end. That's Andrew Smith, the senior tight end, is able to pull it in with tight coverage. Andrew Smith, one of those guys, very influential last year in their run to 10 and 0, and at one point 13 and 0 last year for the Eagles. He is a big tight end, but again, very mobile, very agile, and he will go over the middle like he just did. On that first down play, that picks up another first down for the Eagles. Ball on their own 31 yard line. Pappas hands it off. Up the middle, and not much room for Devin Hunter to work there as the Bulldogs were able to close in and quickly tackle him after a four-yard gain. And for Hunter, that was his first carry since the fumble. Meanwhile, Pappas now 6-6 six six on the night throwing the ball. We'll give you his stats in a bit. He's been efficient. Pappas gets the snap, looks for a quick slant, and he is able to find Michael Potosik the senior wide receiver, and that was a well-executed slant play. That was a well-executed tackle, too. Potosik had a lot of size on that defender, Cole, and if you notice, it was a good wrap-up tackle from the jersey down. If Falls doesn't make that tackle, Potosik scoring. Again, no safety deep, so the corner did need to make the tackle there. On a first down here, Pappas back. He's scrambling in the pressure, and he gets tripped up from behind. He falls forward for a positive gain of yards, but... That was good pressure there by the Bulldogs. Yeah, that's, again, what we saw them do a lot of last week against Midview. That's really where they're going to make their hay tonight. Down under a minute here in the first quarter. Clock ticking. Pappas in the gun. Gets a snap, hands it off to Hunter. Hunter goes, excuse me, that is number 41. Desmond Kelly, who checked in the game, the senior wide, excuse me, the senior running back. He went off to the left-hand side of his line, able to pick a couple, up a couple yards, makes it a third and four from the Bulldogs' 46. And fans with 14 seconds left on the clock, this will probably be the last play of the quarter, unless it's an incomplete pass, and even then down to seven seconds. So Devin Hunter, the senior running back, number 21. Desmond Kelly, the senior running back as well, also number 41. And he barrels forward off of that handoff. And it looks like he's going to get the first down as that is the end of the quarter. And we're going to change sides with your score. The Bulldogs leading the Avon Eagles eight to seven at the end of the first quarter. Once again, I'm Cole McDaniel here with Vince McKee on Keon Sports. And we're back for the start of the second quarter here on Keon Sports. The Olmstead Falls Bulldogs leading the Avon Eagles 8-7. to seven. Avon coming out, operating with a first and 10. The ball on the 42-yard line. If they're driving, 
and have now entered Bulldogs territory. Again, I'm Cole McDaniel here alongside Vince McKee. And Vince will be giving you score updates from other games. They have on Lake 14, Berea, zero. Pappas finds his receiver on the slant. That's number 11, Aiden Hanna. And that's going to get another first down for Avon, and they're steadily moving the ball right now. Yep, another big gain of 15. His last three passes, 55, 10, 15, 15. He's Pappas, like you said, he's efficient, and he's picking up chunks. Pappas with the hand up. Often Desmond Kelly stuffed. He got hit and driven backwards, but was able to fall forwards after getting hit. So he picks up two yards, second and eight, now at the 25-yard line. Head coach of Avon, Mike Elder, taking the page of the out of the Olmstead Falls playbook tonight using multiple backs, as it looks like Kelly's in there again, Cole. Pappas with Kelly right behind him. Takes a snap, fakes the handoff, looking to throw. He's got time. Fires to the far side of the field, and that one low. He was looking for Erskine, but that one was incomplete and tight coverage there by the safety, Nick Hearn. Yeah, for Pappas, his first incomplete pass of the day. I'll tell you what, Cole, it wouldn't have shocked me there right now if he would have took off with that. He had all day. I don't know how much of a hole he had, but, you know, instead of trying to force that pass. And that's one where it looked like he, if he would have put that high, where only his receiver could have got to it, maybe yeah. that would have been more effective. I, that one might have slipped out, came off a little low. Here's the snap and the handoff as Hunter's back into the game. Hunter rumbling forward, got wrapped up and taken down. He's going to be short of the first down marker. That should set up about a fourth and three or a fourth and four. And we'll see if they go for it. And it looks like they have the offense out there going to be aggressive early. It have been about a 38-yard kick. Pappas getting the call over from the sideline. So here in the first drive of the second quarter, the Eagles looking to respond. Pappas throws it out to his receiver. And Potasic able to go up and get it. That is Michael Potasic, again, the senior wide receiver, coming off of a, a simple comeback route there. And a great job getting to the marker and coming back to find that football. Excellent job of Potasic to know where the marker was at, too. So the drive continues for the Eagles. Pappas rolling to his right. Hunter, lead blocker for him. Makes a move, cuts inside, and that move picks up an extra th three yards for him, and he is down inside the 10. Nico Papp is doing it all the night, and this is where he's the most dangerous. We saw it last week against Avon Lake. We saw it last year in the relief of Danny Zay when he played. The kid could absolutely do it all here in the red zone. Watch out for Pappas to take off with it here, Cole. After that gain of eight by Pappas, it sets up a second and two from the eight-yard line. Pappas to throw. And he had Michael Potasic in the end zone, but not able to find him. And excuse me, Potasic. He was looking for him in the end zone. It's not able to find him after the tip ball there by the Bulldogs. They live to see another day here as they're trying to hold out the Eagles from getting into the end zone. So third and two from the eight-yard line. Pappas, handoff to Hunter. Hunter. Barrels forward, and that is going to pick up the first down and set up a first and goal for the Eagles. So on that second down and two play, too, they had the whole playbook, you know, available to them. And look, here we go again. They're rushing to the line, Cole. And Vince, you're right. Quickly back to the line. A little bit of hurry up offense right now. Pappas hands it off to Hunter. Hunter barreling forward, and that is a touchdown for the Eagles. And they take their first lead of the night. That makes it 13-8. to eight. And they'll send out their special teams unit to try to make it 14. So the five-yard touchdown by Hunter, making up for his earlier fumble. And now here we go with the Eagles, 13 unanswered. And as we had said early on, Olmstead Falls, could they play with the lead? They've already given it up. Let's see where we go from here. Nathaniel Bakos looking to capitalize on the PAT. It's up. And he splits the uprights, and that makes it 14-8 to eight in favor of the visiting Eagles. We've got just over nine minutes left to go here in the second quarter. You're listening to KeyOnSports.com. That's K-E-E-OnSports.com. 
We are accepting sponsorships for the rest of the season. If you have a small business and you want your sponsorship, 30 to 45 second commercial read throughout the game and at halftime, email me, Vince McKee, at coachfin14 at yahoo.com. Again, you're listening to Keon Sports with Cole McDaniel and Vince McKee. And as we come back out here, it's going to be the Bulldogs now looking to respond as they are facing a deficit for the first time here tonight as the host team against the Eagles. Both teams coming into this matchup at one and one. And fans, fans, real quick, speaking of halftime, it is going to be 20 minutes long. We're going to try to give you some scores from around the area during that halftime. Talk about some sort of sponsors. And, uh, yeah, 20 minutes again this week, Cole. Yeah, and that's something that we weren't sure what was going to happen with the new the new schedule. We had heard that with you know the visiting bands not coming anymore, we heard that uh, it was going to be shortened. But two weeks in a row now here, uh, it's going to be 20 minutes. The kick is away by Vakos. Conti back to return. He fields it right at the goal line. He runs it out. He's got some room. He's past the 30, past the 35, and going to go down at about the 37-yard line. Great job there by Rocco Conti. Score update for you. Brush Athletics 7, Luther East 6. It looks like a touchdown as Brush responds with the scoring drive of their own. AJ Short connects with Antoine Wolfolk for a 14-yard touchdown catch. Thank you, Tony Bogan, for that. Brush 7, Lutheran 6. See you look. Keeps it. Rolls off to the right-hand side, falls forward for a gain of three. That will make it a second and seven. As he is now at the 40-yard line, nine minutes to go here in the second quarter. And since that first drive that the Bulldogs had success, the Avon defense has been able to respond. They've given up some yards, especially after that last drive, the one previously. But the Bulldogs, once they got into Eagles territory, had to punt the ball away. Zulek takes a snap, rolls off the left-hand side. He throws it down the field. He's looking for Conti and diving Conti. And he pulls it in at the 31-yard line. Great job rolling out by Zulek, throwing a ball where only his receiver could get to it. And Rocco Conti, for a second week in a row, has been performing well. Unbelievable out of Rocco Conti tonight. Like you said, doing a little bit of everything. Had a catch earlier in the night for 55 that one goes for 25, and Rocco Conti, the whole show tonight. Siolik pitches it to Pinchek. Pinchek to the right-hand side, quickly brought down by a host of tacklers. And that was a swarm of yellow over there on that far sideline. And Cole, I want to point something out real quick. The only thing that pass did just now, Siolik to Conti, is it, it's going to give him his confidence back. He was a little rough there. You know, one out of his last five, that one reception was actually for minus yardage. So what that's going to do for Seolik, it should work wonders moving on with the rest of this drive. Parkowski behind Seolik. Haven't seen too many carries by Parkowski lately. Seolik throws it out quickly to number four, Ethan Williams. Williams quickly wrapped up. So after that big gain and completion to Rocco Conti, two plays that didn't go anywhere for the Bulldogs, and now they're facing a third and long. They're trying to pick up a first down and trying to get back on the board and hoping to take the lead back from the Eagles, who have really responded well after giving up that initial touchdown. Elsewhere, Walsh Jesuit 10, Holy Name 0, and many of you, we saw them last week. They lead Amherst 14-10. Seven minutes to go. Third and ten from the 31. Ciola. He's got two to his right, two to his left. He's rolling. He's rolling. Pressured from behind. He's got to throw it. He's able to find his receiver. It's pulled in for the gain. And we'll see if Carson Atkins, the wide receiver, was able to stretch and pick it up. So it looks like we have a penalty marker down on the far side of the field. We'll see what the officials. Really, like our second or third flag of the night. Yeah, not too many flags from the officials tonight. Ooh. And that is going to be a personal foul against the Eagles. So that automatically gives the first down to the Bulldogs. And it looked like they were close, but going to be just short. And that penalty flag is going to be enough to help the 
the Bulldogs move down and move pretty close to uh, getting into the end zone. Great field position right now. Yeah, that one ended all out there, the, the flag that I should say, of whether they were going to go for it on fourth and one. Now DeLuca doesn't have to make the decision. But the Eagles with their backs against the goal line. Still like takes it, and he gets close to the end zone, and the official shakes his head. That is going to be a touchdown for the Bulldogs. Great read and great keeper there by Siolik. And that is going to tie up this game. And the Bulldogs now looking to once again reclaim the lead here at home. And Cole, he got popped. You saw him just get snapped at the end of that play. Great job by Siolik. The football take a vicious hit, guys. You're not here to see it, but let me tell you, that hit was vicious. Great job out of Charlie Siolik. So number 18, Drew Kanaba out there to kick once again. Last time, he didn't get to take a kick off of the PAT because Parkowski was the holder, and he ran in for the two-point conversion. This time, Kanaba does get to split the uprights, and he puts that one up on the board to now give the Bulldogs a lead once again, making it 15-14. to 14. We've got six and a half minutes left to go here in the second quarter. Again, we're in Olmstead Falls as the Avon Eagles are visiting. Hey, and guys, we do want to send a very special thank you to Jim Lloyd, the Olmstead Falls superintendent, joining us on the broadcast tonight, listening. Thank you, sir. You have made the accommodations for us at Olmstead Falls amazing. And we want to thank everybody at Olmstead Falls. These first two weeks have been incredible. Thank you, Olmstead Falls. And tonight, it looks like we've got one heck of a game on our hands. And now after the Bulldogs take that lead, we're going to be sending this one away. As the Eagles continue to line up with three deep. You don't usually see three deep to return a kick, but it's something the Eagles usually seem to do, and they've done it all tonight. Oh, yeah, that's different. It is different. <laughs> Not much I could add to that other than that is different. Usually you see two back, so oh. it's interesting to see three. But they've got the whole field covered as they await this Kanaba kick. Well, thank you again. And we got an issue with the clock, and now the clock is good. And the scoreboard is reset, and we are good to go. So 624. And this kick is up off to the far side of the field. Potasic pulls it in and carries it forward. That is Ryan Potasic, the junior wide receiver. Yes, there are two Potasics out there, number one and number three, Michael and Ryan Potasic. The Cousins. And a little bit of a carry there. Able to get enough yards to get close to the 20. But they're marked at about the 18. Excuse me, marked at the 21. That's where the officials have it right now. And again, Cole, I got to say, the, and you could disagree, it's cool. But to me, I think the biggest play in that drive was the Conti 25-yard mm -hmm. catch. You know, kept it going, extended it. Then you tack on 15, you know, well, not 15 yards, but had the distance on that, uh, you know, unnecessary roughness. There you go. And that, said Falls taking advantage. That's right. That catch was the big play. Quickly going deep is Pappas, but just out of the reach of Ryan Potasic. And so that now sets up the second and 10 from their own 21 for the Eagles. But going back to what you said, Vince, mm -hmm. I definitely think that catch by Rocco Conti, he laid out, got the diving catch. That's what really sparked that drive and led them to scoring the touchdown. Pappas, fake to the handoff. He's scrambling, he needs some help, and he throws it at the feet of his intended target, number 47, Andrew Smith. And that was a lot of pressure there by the front of the Bulldogs. Smart move there too uh, by Pappas, not to throw it into a crowd. Really did kind of throw it away. Yes, he threw it at a receiver, but that was definitely more so a throwaway pass. Now Pappas, after hitting his first nine in a row, has now gone one for his last six. Great adjustments by the Bulldog defense. Empty backfield for Pappas. Five receiver set. He's in the gun. He's got a roll to his left as he's getting pressured. He looks for his oh. and it's intercepted. That is number 35, Nick Kern. And Nick Kern gets down inside the 15. It looks like they're going to spot him about the 12-yard line, and he jumped that route by the tight end, number 47, Andrew Smith. And I don't know, Pappas just might not have seen Hearn, 
What another outstanding play by the Bulldog. Unbelievable. They, they continue to make those one-on-one -on -one plays. They have phenomenal wrap-up tackles. Phenomenal one-on-one -on -one coverage. They're doing what it takes to win. They're doing what it takes to upset one of the best teams in the state. Right now, early on, my head is off to that Bulldogs defense. The adjustments real quick. Now one for his last seven with an interception on Pappas, who early on was torching them. So that is the second turnover of the day for the Eagles. The first one was a fumble, and that one an interception on this first snap on this first down. Siolik rolled out to his right-hand side. He couldn't really find anybody easily, but he was able to find Conti for a short completion. That puts the ball on the eight-yard line, makes it a second and six. Four yards to the eight-yard line, second down and six. So last time we saw... The Bulldogs in a similar position like this. Siolik had a keeper going to the left-hand side and was able to go into the end zone. This time he hands it off up the middle. Not much room. There is that was number five, Clay Vormelker. The fullback into the game. He's a junior. And so that just cleared out enough room to get it to the six, making it a third and a four. So still four yards to go to get this third down. But in this territory, in this type of a game, I see this as four down territory, wouldn't you, Vince? Absolutely. I mean, I got all the fifth in the world in Canaveral, but if you could really put your, your foot on the throat of Avon, do it. Go for it. Ball floated to the back corner of the end zone. A lot of contact there. Ooh, I would have threw the flag. Yeah, and, and here's why I think the officials are going to let that one go. I think that was an uncatchable ball. Okay. I, th I think it was way out of the back of the end zone and overthrow. I think if there was more of an opportunity there for Cooney to get to it, then maybe they might have thrown the flag. You talked me into it, bud. I'll say uncatchable. <laughs> Fourth and four from the six, and we're going to get an answer right now. They actually, it looks like they're going to kick it. Yep. It does. Oh, yep. Yep. They are going to kick it. Canava's onto the field. An opportunity to make it a four point lead. Canava. A low line drive, and that splits the uprights. It's up and it's good, making it 18 to 14 with four and a half minutes left to go. Here, Vince, is why I said it was four down territory is because I thought you score, maybe even look to go to a, a two point conversion as well, make it a two score game, which would be a big difference maker. They decided to go with the field goal and stretch out the lead to four points. That makes a lot of sense, Cole. I mean, you, you got to You have to agree with it in, in certain ways. No, but here, I'll say this. Early on in the night, Homestead Falls was unable to capitalize off the Devin Hunter fumble. Yep. They learned from that. They got another gift just now with the interception. What do they do? They capitalized. They got some points out of it. They did, and points are always important. That's how to win this game. So that's a big thing for the Bulldogs. Again, I'm Cole McDaniel here alongside Vince McKee. We're excited to be bringing you high school football once again for a second week in a row, and we're excited to continue to bring you this season on Friday night. The Bulldogs set to kick it away. It's Kanaba who just converted on the field goal. He steps up for the kick. This one, another low line drive. This one right down the middle of the field. Quickly returned by number 16 of the Eagles and that is Colin Kaufman. And he only gets out about as far as they got the last time they returned it. So. This one gets it up to the 22 as the Eagles are going to try to respond and have another good drive following the turnover. Some quick scores for you guys. It is St. Vincent St. Mary leading Benedicted 14 to 10. We have Columbia up 14 to 13 on Clearview. North Olmstead, as we said, up early on. North Ridgeville 14 0. And real quick, Avon Lake 21, Berea Mid Park 7. And just a reminder at halftime, we will continue to update you on scores around the area. The Eagles with possession of the ball, an early handoff to Hunter here. He takes it, breaks a few tackles, and nearly gets up to the first down marker for about a gain of eight or nine. They're going to say it's nine yards, second and one. Ball on the 31. I would expect to see another handoff up the middle, and it is, and Hunter barrels forward, and he's able to pick up that first down. Still a one-score game here at 18-14. No need to panic for Avon going into the half. Plenty of time to keep handing it off to their big hoss there with Hunter. Why not? If, get them, you need to get them going. 
that touchdown on the last drive could have did it. Two receivers in the near side of the field, one on the far side. Hunter to the left of Pappas. A snap under the gun. A fake. He throws it down the field, and he finds Potosic, and it's incomplete. Michael Potosic was wide open, and down that over-the-shoulder catch, it just slipped out of his hands. He was wide open, like you said, and it was a good pass. Not much more to add to it than that. I mean, it was right in his hands, Cole. He might have saw the open field ahead of him because if that's a catch, that's a touchdown. That's when youth takes over sometimes. So Pappas hands it off to Hunter. Hunter dodging a couple tacklers. He's got room up the middle. He's barreling towards the end zone. Can he get a blocker? And he's not going to need it. He's going to walk this one into the end zone untouched. Hunter, all it took was vision and patience. And as soon as he cut back and found the middle, he was gone for a big touchdown, and the Eagles once again reclaim the lead. Yeah, absolutely. Good cut there, too. He cut it about the 32-yard line. He was running straight, saw a defender, did a little cut to the left. Not sure he couldn't have barreled through it anyways, but still, good open field vision there. And like you said, man, giving the Eagles the lead, 2018. Plenty of time on the clock still for the Bulldogs to try to respond as they will get the ball back. But first, the Vakos kick is up and it's good and making it 21 to 18. So three and a half minutes for the Bulldogs to work with to try to take the lead before going into halftime. And again, here on Keon Sports, I'm Cole McDaniel alongside Vince McKee. We're really excited to be bringing you all this coverage this fall. We, we were waiting around all summer, waiting to see what would happen. I'm sure everybody was waiting to see what would happen with football season. A lot has changed. The NFL is about to start here in the next week. Uh, we're also seeing college football starting here soon as tomorrow. Really the first big college football Saturday as there's going to be some games happening tomorrow. Who's playing? I know there's a couple. Okay. I, I don't doubt you. I just, I, here's the thing. You just made my heart flutter. My it's, it's, it's confusing to know who's playing because okay. we got a bunch of little schools right now, too. We've had like Central Arkansas, a couple games like that on TV. But we are getting some football here coming soon. Uh, this would be the first big one of the week. And again, this is the week that the Big Ten would have been starting. Big Ten not playing right now. But hearing rumors that possibly could be coming up in October. November, we will see what happens. But for this area with college football, we would definitely love to see that. But we got high school football coverage, and we're excited to be bringing you that. The kick is away. Conti, again, from the goal line, quickly running out. And he gets to about the 24-yard line before he is stopped. And so we are going to have pretty much exactly three and a half minutes to go for this Olmstead Falls drive to try to respond to the touchdown by the Eagles just a minute ago. The Bulldogs come out. Selick under center. He draws back to pass, finds Cooney. Cooney, a man to beat. He's able to get past the defensive back, and he's brought, wrapped up from behind. Good move there. And as soon as Cooney pulled that one in, he got his eyes upfield, made the defender miss, and got 18 yards out of that catch. Great play. And we've got an injury on the field. It is an Avon player down. Looks like he's asking to get stretched, so it might just be a cramp. But with the injury, we are going to take a quick timeout here on Keon Sports. We'll be right back for more coverage of Avon Lake at Olmstead Falls. And we're back after that injury timeout. And in that break, Vince was telling me all about how excited he is to see football back on TV, as we were just talking about that a minute ago. But here, a quick pitch to Fiskanich coming off to the left-hand side. 
and he's going to get just enough to get the first down once again. And we've got another player down on the field. So right after we came out of that injury timeout, we've got an eagle down here. Looks like cramps, though. Nothing serious, guys. Don't don't get too scared just yet. Definitely looks like cramps. Yeah, and it's a little bit different weather this week. You know, oh, a little they've bit. Been, they've been practicing. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, though, the temperature is nice, but the sun was warm when they came out here and were warming up. Yeah. So it, it is a little bit different. And obviously, preseason was a little different for them. Probably couldn't have the pads on quite as long and as much contact. So you will see some more of the cramps, especially earlier in games, earlier than you usually would see. But looks like the player is up and he will be good to go and we will be back in action here in just a moment some score updates for you while we wait though it is midview now trailing amherst uh that's uh trevor brazina out there tyler brazina and the comets now lead 17 to 14 in that one it looks like brexville tied with hudson at 14 all and cole real quick i gotta tell you this does feel tonight like high school football with the sun coming down right now, mm -hmm. I, I miss the fans. I'm not gonna lie, I miss there being more fans. But last week with that with that torrential downpour, to me it felt like a Thanksgiving weekend kind of game. Just terrible weather. It did. It did feel like a late season game earlier in the year. It was definitely different. So the Bulldogs in opponent territory, and prior to the snap, we have whistles, and is going to be a timeout taken by the Eagles as they're trying to get their defense set up and avoid giving up points here again just under three minutes to play avon with a three-point lead and fans if you're just joining us let me go ahead and give you a update on how we got to this 21 18 score it was charlie seolik to cooney 15 yards to 59 mark sneaky two-point conversion good with parkowski gave the homestead falls bulldogs a quick 8-0 lead avon came right back it was Pappas to Matlock, a bomb, 55 yards at the 501 mark. Extra point good. Cut into that lead, 8-7. to seven. A couple of possessions later, Avon got it back. Long, methodical drive. This time, it was Devin Hunter plowing in, giving the Eagles a 14-8 to eight lead. Olmstead Falls bounced back. Phenomenal 13-yard touchdown run by Charlie Seolik. Just got drilled. Guys, I can't begin to tell you how hard he got hit at the goal line. Amazing job holding on to the football. Kept it in the grip. They get the extra point. They go back up 15-14. From there, they get a phenomenal turnover. They have to settle for a 25-yard field goal by Canaba, 18-14. And then again, real quick, the 65-yard touchdown run by Hunter puts Avon right back on top, 21-18. That is where we stand. And coming out of the timeout, again, the Bulldogs in opponent's territory. Seolik takes a snap, drops back to pass. Quick dump off, and that one was low to Pinchek. Pinchek would have had some room to run but not able to pick it up off of his shoestrings and run with it. So that will be incomplete and set up a second and 10 for the Bulldogs. And Vince, coming into this game, I was so excited today, excited for this one to come up. I just had a feeling that this is going to be a close game. No matter what happens in the second half, we have had an amazing first half in front of us, and it's still not over. Some more things can happen here in the next two and a half minutes. Two, two, two very well-coached teams. Very well-coached teams. Siolik drops back. Looking to the right-hand side, fires it down the field. His receiver stopped running, and that one will be incomplete. That was number 29, Michael Cando. I think he tried to come back, think he was going to be a strike there up the field. Instead, Siolik thought that he was going to continue running. So a little bit of miscommunication there between the receiver and the quarterback. Now setting up a third and 10. Again, ball still on the 46. Yeah, they got to find that rhythm again real quick here. You know, they're down in 10, plenty of time left if they don't get this for Avon to get the ball back and score again. So they need to keep possession on this ball, Cole. Seolik rolls out to the right-hand side. Well read there by the Eagles. Is That was number seven, Kaya Yonkers. As he was waiting for that, he read that the whole way. And Seolik had nowhere to go as that edge was set by Yonkers. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, we have been saying it all game long. Obviously, last week in the second half, the Eagles showed you just how good and how big they are up front. Kong, that put you on the spot. You actually said it. We were, we're standing down there, you know, pregame, look over, and it, it's hard to not notice just how big those Eagles are. Yeah, absolutely. They definitely are. And the thing is, so midview last week, they were running a 3-4 base defense. They just weren't mm -hmm. setting the edge well with their outside linebackers. Yep. Yep. You see the Eagles here also running that 3-4, but their outside linebackers have done a pretty good job 
reading and setting that edge on the outside. I mean, really, granted, the Seolik touchdown run was probably about the only one that they didn't set the edge and keep them from bouncing it to the outside. Yeah, no doubt about it. And so here we have another timeout as on the fourth and eight from the 44-yard line, the Bulldogs were set to punt it away. Again, a timeout here just under two minutes to go. We're going to quick take a quick timeout with them as well. You're listening to High School Football here on Key on Sports. As we come out of the timeout after that quick break, we've got a punt. It is number 18, Drew Canaba back to send it away. Scores after this play. Sit tight, fans. I know you want those scores. <laughs> Ball up in the air. Looks like it's going to fall about inside the 10-yard line. It is caught by number 27, Cam Erskine. Quickly taken down. And here it is, Cole. And like we said, we have an entire second half still to, to be played tonight. But in my heart, in my vision, in, in my football, I don't know, instinct, I'm going to say it right now, and you can disagree, and it's cool. But if Avon scores right here, scores a touchdown, that's big. Yeah. Because it's like all that momentum that Olmstead Falls worked so hard to get. Just, I mean, I'm not going to say they completely lose all of it. But you see where I'm going with that point? They just they cannot let Avon score here. Keep it within one score. Well, with under two minutes left to go, expect the Eagles to go to the air as they're going to have to make up some ground very quickly. Pappas, though, looks to run it as he pulled it back in off of that fake handoff. He's tripped up on the outside, and it looks like that was Hearn once again. And Hearn coming down from his safety spot. He might not be the biggest guy on the field, but he is making a difference tonight for the Bulldogs. Now second and six from the 21 for the Eagles. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Pappas in the gun. He's getting pressured from behind. He slips out of the pressure, looking to go somewhere. He spins and gets only two yards. Great job by the Bulldogs in their relentless pressure. Crucial third down here, third down and six from their own 21. This is big for Avon. And really, I'll say this, is actually bigger for Olmstead Falls. They need to stop them right here. Do not let them score again. Well, and after those two plays, that took a lot of time off the clock. Unless the Eagles have a big strike here, it's going to be hard for them to cover all this ground and put points up on the board. But they're going to try to do so as Pappas drops back. He looks for the pass to the far side. Potasic. It is incomplete. He nearly tried to pull it in, but Potasic could not as Sam Munoz had the tight coverage and the immediate hit. So that's up to a fourth and seven from the 20-yard line. Only 34 seconds left to go here in the second quarter. And I might sound like a broken record, and that's okay, but I'll say it one more time. That is the biggest stop of the game so far for Homestead Falls. Granted, Avon wasn't doing anything yet, but that could have been the worst thing that could have happened there was for them to score quick, get the ball back to start the second half. Would have been bad news for the for the Bulldogs. Well, the thing to be clear about is that, you know, that's some that's saying something. When they've had stops and they've had a fumble that they've recovered, they've also had an interception. But that is a huge stop. That three and out right there is massive, like you said, Vince. So now two returners back. It's Conti and Cooney for the Bulldogs. Looks like another timeout, Cole. And we do have another timeout. We've got 34 seconds here. We're going to actually keep it here real quick, guys, and give you a few scores as Mentor leading Euclid 17-6. to six. Euclid came in. Uh, a lot of a lot of people had them ranked high in the in the high school polls. They're hanging tough with Mentor right now, but Mentor leads at 17-6. to six. Perkins trails Clyde 21-7. to seven. That's actually a big game for everybody out there in the Sandusky area. Again, uh, St. Vincent, St. Mary, last check, 14-10 up on Benedictine. At the half, it is Revere 7, Aurora 6. And again, we will have more scores for you at halftime. Stay with us. We're going to tell you about all of our fine sponsors, and we're going to give you some scores. And uh, don't go away. And as Vince mentioned, at halftime, quickly approaching only 34 seconds away of game time here in this one. Again, Avon 
still holding a three-point lead at 21 to 18 over the Bulldogs. The punt is away. Again, Cooney and Conti back to return. And that one going to go out around the 45-yard line on the Bulldogs' side of the field. So now 28 seconds left to operate for the Bulldogs. This is one where you know they love to run the ball, but this has to be you have to throw here. You've got to go to the air to make up that ground quickly. Absolutely. About every play in football is on average about seven to eight seconds, so that's what you have to prepare for. Uh, you know, you have to throw the ball here. And, and okay, I'll say this too. Throw to the sidelines. Be careful with it. Do not go over the middle unless it's wide open. But I trust Charlie Seal like he has shown me in his two years at the helm. He's very careful with the football. And, uh, well, Cole, looks like I'm dead wrong. Looks like they're going to need it. Nope. Nope, there's the pitch to Conti. Conti getting to the outside. And tell you what, Vince, it's that triple option tricks you. And uh, the thing is, they had the two slot receivers there to block. Conti motioned over from the left-hand side, and there was the pitch from Seolik. Good job by Conti to get to the outside, but the clock is still ticking, and it looks like they're going to let this one run out as we're down to five, four, three, two, and one. So that takes us to halftime, and as we go to halftime, the visiting Avon Eagles lead this one 21-18 to 18 over the Olmstead Falls Bulldogs. Again, both of these teams coming in the matchup at one and one, trying to advance to two and zero oh as they start this early and short season. And here to tell you about all of our amazing sponsors, the man, the myth, the legend, the best pitch man since Howard Cassell, my partner, Cole McDaniel. Let's pay some bills. Thank you, Vince. So as we take a look at our sponsors here at halftime on Keon Sports, we're going to first look at SKN Biopharma. SKN Biopharma is hand sanitizer, which protects hands for up to eight hours and their surface protectant, which protects surfaces for over or for up to 90 days, are non-toxic and utilize revolutionary technology to kill pathogens of all types longer than anyone previously thought possible. Their business has absolutely exploded, and their products are available right now at www.skinmicrosure.com. Protect yourself, protect your family, and protect your business with the best solutions available on the planet. I'll tell you what, Vince, their stuff definitely has exploded lately, hasn't it? Yeah, and you know what? I'm going to go off the record here and on the record or whatever it is. I guess I'm going to break down the fourth wall. I'll just say it. Sean Williams is a personal friend of mine. He's the owner of that business. Guys, the Denver Broncos are using that product. Mm -hmm. The Green Bay Packers. He had a meeting last week with Jerry Jones. He's sending me text messages at midnight of pictures of Jerry <laughs> Jones's office. SKN Biopharma. If you have any small business, any big business, you want it to be safe for your employees that you know they're going to be coming back to work soon, check them out. And I already told Sean, I said, you come back next year, I am tripling, if not quadrupling, the price of your sponsorship because <laughs> you, my friend, are going to be a billionaire. Go ahead, Cole. Absolutely. It has definitely blown up. That's why I wanted to pitch it to you, Vince. <laughs> SK and Biopharma. Make sure to check them out. Also, Richard Ward with RE Max Beyond 2000. Richard Ward is a full-time realtor specializing in listing homes, new home construction, military relocation, and pricing strategies. Whether buying or selling, Richard Ward has the experience, knowledge, and determination to get the job done. For more information, contact Richard at richardwardrealty.com. MDG Flooring, if you're in need of quality flooring for your home or office, then look no further than MDJ Flooring America in Medina. There is nothing that Steve and his talented staff cannot handle. Call them today at 330-725-5252 or stop in and visit them in person at 3812 Pearl Road in Medina. Kobo's Insurance. Kobo's has been serving the Cleveland area for over 50 years. They're independent agents, so they have lots of companies to find customers the best rate. They specialize in car, home, life, and business insurance. They're family-run and have two locations, one in Elyria and one in Avon Lake. Cleveland Fitness Club. For 20-plus years, they have been much more than a place to go work out. They have it all, bikes, tracks, courts, and even pools. They truly have something for everyone and are open 365 days a year. You can visit them today at 6600 West 130th Street in Middleburg Heights. Angela and Tony promote a family-run business for all the right reasons. Airport Go-Kart. If you're looking for a fun time with your kids or friends once the weather starts to warm up, 
head over to Airport Go Kart at 16208 Brook Park Road in Cleveland. It's fun for everyone involved at a next to nothing price. Car Parts Warehouse. Speaking of cars, if you're in need of repairs, then the first place you need to call for that part is Car Parts Warehouse. They cut out the middlemen and bring the service right to you. With the lowest prices in town and inventory a country mile wide, they have everything line. you will need for any issues. Find them at, online at carpartswarehouse.net. Frankie's Italian Cuisine. Looking for a place to enjoy a post-game meal? I am. Where should I go? Really? Yeah, you should go to Frankie's Italian Cuisine. That's you true. love I'm, Italian I food, I love Italian right? food. I'm down in the ponds. I want a meatball. That's great. So if you love Italian food like Vince McKee over here, Frankie's Italian Cuisine has you covered from meatball to lasagna. Visit them tonight at 4641 Great Northern Boulevard in North Olmsted. Top tier performance, Chris Walker and top tier performance is the top combo for any athlete looking to improve his or her game. Look him up on Facebook today. Phone call or text 216-789-7540 or email cwalker199571 at gmail.com. Mention Key on Sports, and he'll offer a 15% discount on any training session going forward. I'll tell you what, Vince. Yeah. As you go through the sponsors we talked about last week, you have it set up here on the list where it goes from food to exercise, <laughs> food to exercise. So if you need the, the method of how to do that, Vince has it down. You go, you eat, you exercise and burn that off. You eat again, you burn that off with some more exercise. Absolutely. And Cole, not that you're not doing a phenomenal job with these reads, but the next one, I, I, I just have to do for personal reasons. She Absolutely. asked me. She's a North Olmsted alumnus. It is Jennifer McGuire who owns Jenny's Popcorn. And, guys, you all voted. We had an unbelievable turnout this week. Thank you, Jenny's Popcorn. They, they do sponsor the Player of the Week. I'm going to give away a little secret on air. Each week, the Player of the Week not only gets the honor of being our Player of the Week, at the end of the year they get a plaque. However, on top of all of that, you know how cool Jenny is? She sends every week the winner a huge prize package of popcorn. All kinds of varieties, tins, the whole deal. She's awesome. That's all I could say. So, guys, check her out. Jenny's Old Fashioned Popcorn. Like we said, family-owned tradition. And they are at 38727 Taylor Parkway in North Olmsted. Buy them anywhere popcorn is sold. And before Cole talks to you about Mullins, Soccer Shots, and VA Sweet are our final three sponsors today. We're going to break up the monotony real quick with some scores. Absolutely. And we will go back to the sponsors here in a minute. Guys, here are the scores, guys and girls. As we stand at halftime, all these scores are halftime scores. Revere, 7. Aurora, 6. Chardon, 7. South, that's Willoughby South, 0. St. Vincent, St. Mary, 14. Benny, Benedictine, 13 at the half. Avon Lake, they're responding well to the loss. They're up big on Berea, mid-park, 28-7. to 7. Medina, in a, in a close one. I mean, this is a real good game going on. Medina, 14. Brunswick, 14. Mogador, 25. Triway, 21. Metzger and Euclid. Metzger leads it 17 to 6. Orville and Tusla. And tell me we're not going deep for that game. Orville 13, Tusla 10. Hudson 17, Brexville 14. And finally, way out there by Cedar Point, Clyde leads it 21 to 7 over Perkins. There he is again, the man, the myth, the legend. He wants to hawk some product. Cole McDaniel. Well, before I go to the next sponsor, read just a reminder on Jenny's Popcorn. When you see the uh, player of the week come up, make sure to vote for that. Make sure to go on keonsports.com and put in your votes. And for the athletes who do win the popcorn, just a reminder, if you want to eat all that in one sitting, do it at the beginning of the week before you get close to game time for the next week. Your coaches <laughs> will definitely thank you for that one. But again, make sure it's great that we're partnered up with Jimmy, Jenny's Popcorn and she does that and, and sends the popcorn. It is great. Make sure to vote for player of the week again that will be coming out this weekend as well for tonight's games look for it probably a saturday night guys next up on the list mullins construction it doesn't matter if it's indoor or outdoor mullins construction has everything your home or office will need they even do plumbing hot water tanks windows and everything else your home or office will need Visit them today at http slash slash www.credence.com slash mullins construction Soccer shots. The pitch is perfect for some outdoor action. Sign your kids up for soccer shots today. It is an excellent program to teach your child about exercise and overall hard work. You can find them on Facebook or also soccershots.com. It is the best program you can sign your child up for today. And with it being 
Friday night, always think about Friday is football. Saturday morning is little kids soccer. So perfect time to talk about soccer shots as that would be coming up quickly whenever you think about soccer, always Saturday mornings. I know for you, Vince, yes, you put in those morning. shifts. Back yep. down to tomorrow morning, no doubt. Shout out there to Matt Nolan, uh, Maggie's head coach, and also uh, the, the director of the program, Jim Skiri, as well, Madeline's head coach. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know how important soccer is. Absolutely. Also, we have B.A. Sweetie. If you have a sweet tooth, B.A. Sweetie Candy Company in Cleveland on Brook Park Road has you covered. With everything from your childhood today, they didn't miss a beat putting together this magnificent display of candy and ice cream paradise. You can visit them at 6770 Brook Park Road in Cleveland, Ohio. So once again, I'm Cole McDaniel here alongside Vince McKee. We're at halftime as Olmstead Falls. The Bulldogs are hosting the Avon Eagles. A big conference matchup here between these two teams. And a big, tough game here. The Bulldogs were able to strike first, but the Eagles have the lead at halftime, 21-18. to 18. I'm going to take a quick break here. We're down to about 11 and a half minutes left to go in halftime. We'll be back with some more coverage after we catch our breaths. Stay with us. Make sure to click on that link again and join us once again at the start of the second half. We'll be back in a couple minutes to touch on the first half stats and give you an update on what to see in the second half.
And welcome back. We've got five minutes left of halftime remaining. I'm Cole McDaniel alongside Vince McKee. High school football tonight. We've got week two action. If you're just now tuning in, we'll be coming out of halftime to an Avon Eagles three-point lead over the Olmstead Falls Bulldogs. Again, both teams coming to this matchup 1-0. Two teams that were hoping to move on to 2-0, and and it's going to be a hard-fought battle to get to that record here in the second half as it has been a tough and close game. Vince, what are your thoughts on that game? Well, a couple of things here, you know, before we get to the score recap, I do want to say, you know, on both sides of the ball, it's been a game of flow, okay? Nico, Pagas, or Nico Pappas came out, hit 19, 1, 1, 55, 10, 15, 15, whatever that, you know, 1, 2, 3, that's about nine passes in a row nailed right down the field. And all of a sudden, since then, I'm not going to see the wheels have come off the cart, but it's, it's been a rough go. Incomplete, eight yards, incomplete, 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 interception, incomplete. So whatever Pappas was doing early on in that game, in that first quarter, he's got to try to find that here in the second half. As far as Devon Hunter goes, you know, as I said earlier in the week, as I've said in my article, you know, as we've said on the podcast time and time again, this kid has it. But Nick Perusic no longer around for Avon. They're going to need Hunter to tote that rock 20 times a game at least. He had a slow start, had that fumble. Since then, he's bounced back, had the five-yard touchdown. Then he had carries of 9 5 Rattling off from there, a 65-yard touchdown run. Big play from him. Big play from Matt Matlock, too, with the 55-yard touchdown pass. Cole, I want you to look for that in that second half. Avon can score quick. They've done it twice already tonight with a 55-yard touchdown pass and also a 65-yard touchdown run. Would you agree with that? I would agree. And, and looking at the big touchdown run from Hunter, he really didn't have much room, had the fumble early on. But what you do see is the patience. And he, as he bounced out to the right-hand side, he was looking to his left. He was patient, patient, cut back, made one defender miss. And as soon as he hit the middle of the field, he was gone. So that big playability and that, you know, more elite, strong running back vision yep. is definitely there. So they can keep getting the, him the ball, especially if Pappas is not able to connect with his wide receivers. You look at Michael Potasik a senior wide receiver. He's a good wide receiver. He's very talented. He's dropped a couple tonight. He needs to step it up here in the second half, pull in some of those big catches. You know he has the ability. He's just dropped a couple, uh, especially that one that was wide open in open space. He probably could have taken that to the house, but it's something we saw on the Olmstead Falls side as well. We saw Jimmy Cooney. He got out in the middle of the field, was wide open. Uh, Seolik, he threw it up the middle of the field. It might have been just a little far for him, but if Cooney kept running, he probably could have got under it and maybe pulled that one in and got to the house. So the wide receivers, a couple little miscommunications there with the their quarterbacks, a couple, couple things where we could have seen big plays that did not end up happening. But right now, both teams, they have abilities to come out and put points on the board. It's just a matter of we'll see if they can. Absolutely. And again, you know, I'll mention to kind of piggyback off your point there about Pappas. He only has 17 yards rushing the ball in this first half. Last week against Avon Lake, he did almost all of his damage on the ground in the second half. So let's see, you know, sometimes the run sets up the pass. So let's see if Pappas maybe has a, a few quick RPOs or whatever it takes, get, the, get a few rush yards, relaxes him, then starts throwing the ball better again. We'll see how that works out. And Pappas has run a ton of yards tonight, but side to side, scrambling and getting away from the pressure. Uh, his offensive line is much bigger than Midview's. Last week, as we saw the game here, as Midview came and visited Olmstead Falls. Uh, so their line has been able to handle it better, but they've still been able to get some pressure. And Pappas has had to scramble. He's had to do a couple spin moves as well just to fight and get some yards yeah. and escape the, escape the pressure, really, and to get something positive out of not much there. Absolutely. And guys, with about a little under a minute to go before we have our second half kickoff, we're going to get to that in a second. But in case you're just joining us, just got off of work, just popped on Podbean, we thank you again. You're listening to KeonSports.com. I am Vince McKee alongside the very talented Cole McDaniel. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to keep you updated with how we got this fire. How is it 21-18, Avon? Let us tell you. It was Charlie Seolick to Jimmy Cooney with a 15-yard pass. Beautiful jump ball in the corner. At the 8.59 mark to start the game with a the score. Then they, they, they fake it per se. Uh, well, definitely a fake, actually. Parkowski, direct snap. He was holding it. Anytime you have your massive fullback holding it, maybe you're going to do something sneaky. They did. Takes it right in. 8 nothing. Then from there, though, Avon wasting no time responding. We, we mentioned it there a second ago. 
It was Nico Pappas to Matlock, 55 yards, wide open over the shoulder catch. Then they got it again. They scored again. It was Devin Hunter, a five-yard touchdown run, extra point good. Gave the Eagles a 14-8 lead. From there, Olmstead Falls showed a lot of metal, bounced right back. The 13-yard touchdown run by Charlie Seolik, extra point good by Canaba, 15-14. A huge interception by Olmstead Falls in Eagles territory, deep in Eagles territory, right, right about their 15-yard line. They have to settle for a 25-yard field goal by Drew Canaba. Builds that lead, 18-14. And then with, uh, I don't know, what about under three minutes? I forgot to write that down, and I apologize. But I'd say about three or four minutes left in the first half. Yep. It was a 65-yard touchdown run by Devin Hunter, Hunter that gave Avon the 21-18 to lead. And then as Cole and myself both said numerous times there, Avon got the ball back again mm-hmm. with about two minutes to go. They would have had about 80 yards to get, but they've already shown tonight they could quick strike. And it was Olmstead Falls forcing the three and out, keeping it a one-score game, going into half at 21-18. Right, and as you mentioned, it was around the the three forty mark that amount of time left in the the second quarter where that big Devin Hunter run happened, and he took that one to the house. And it looked like when Avon Avon got the ball back again, it looked like they maybe had an opportunity that with time on the clock they could have gone down the field and scored once again. But a great defensive stand there by the Bulldogs is why we're still seeing a twenty one to eighteen score on the board as we got a minute left about to come out here for the kickoff. And we're excited to get this half underway. Once again, you're listening to Key on Sports. We've got Friday football under the lights now. It was a beautiful evening. It's still a wonderful evening out here. The sun's finally set. Mm-hmm. The lights are on. And we have some nice football weather out here tonight. So also reminder not only to pay attention to us here on on Podbean, uh, on Keon Sports, on Twitter, as well as on Facebook, not only for our links for the live games here on Podbean, but also to check out our writers who are out there, our guys covering those other games. They're constantly tweeting out video as well as score updates. Vince is following some of their score updates to inform you that. But if you want to scroll through, uh, that is being retweeted and liked by Vince here as well. And so you can check that all out on key on sports on twitter absolutely one of those games is uh tony bogan who is at lutheran east and brush where it looks like, again that uh brush up on that one seven to six also over there in um north ridgeville 14 to nothing at the half as has been all north Olmstead at this point in time we are almost set for the start of the second half here the Bulldogs receive the first half kick. Now it will be the Eagles' turn as they will be going from left to right here on our radio dial. The kick is up and away, and it's going to drop and skip right in the hands of number 16, Kaufman. Kaufman getting to the far sideline, try to get around the edge, and just lost his footing as he was coming around the outside. It's going to get up. Just past the 25-yard line. And so now, Pappas and the Eagles offense will come out for their first drive in the second half. And of course, they will be looking to turn this into a two-score game. They'd like to drive the length of the field, put this in the end zone. We'll see what the Bulldogs' defense can do. Hunter, the lead blocker for Pappas, as he rolled out to the right-hand side. A nice gain of five yards there. And it looks like they're going to give him six on the scoreboard. Makes it a uh, second and four now. And that was a sneaky six yards, too, because it didn't look like he got a ton. He just kept cutting around that edge, cutting mm-hmm. around that edge. And the one thing they definitely like to do with Hunter's big body and his his physicality, they like to get him as the lead blocker, especially going to that right-hand side. Yep when Pappas is carrying it in his right arm. Pappas hands it off to Hunter, and the defensive line there by the Bulldogs keeps it to no gain. So that is going to turn into a third and four from 31. Great job, great push there. 
from the whole Bulldogs defensive line. They really closed in. I just hit the numbers in my head there. 108 yards on the ground for Devin Hunter in that first half. Obviously, the big 65-yard play, more than half those. That definitely helps. Pappas gets the snap. Looks at the far side of the field. Off of a slant, he was trying to find Michael Patasek. He led him a little bit too far and set up his receiver to take the shot and get hit. Patasek not able to hold on to the ball after that hit and delivered by the defensive back. Sean Hollenbach, man, he, he lined him up and blasted him. Right now, the hit of the game right there, Sean Hollenbach on that one. Deserves his name and number called. And the offense wanted to stay on the field and go for it on fourth down, but the coaching staff... Of Avon thinks better of that, and Mike Elder, the head coach, decides to send on his punt unit, and I would say in your own territory with the lead right now this early in half, no need to go for it, and he made the right decision as he's oh. going to be punting this one away. Penalty markers here well, from they, the back judge. They might have got it anyways. What is this? Nope, oh, false start. There's a delay of game. Yep, okay. As it took them so long to, to decide to send the offense out there. There's no way you go for that, up. Cole. There's no way you no, go for that. No, no. I mean, Coach Elder, he's ballsy, but he's not gonna he's not gonna do that. That's that'd be insane. So after that penalty, it will set up better field position for the Bulldogs as they scoot up on the return. It's gonna be Cooney who fields it. He makes a quick move, splits the defense, and gets past midfield. Great job by Jimmy Cooney. That quick cut and going to his right hand side was able to open up that gap. Good job blocking as well by the return team. Yeah, and now for the Olmstead Falls defense, that is back-to-back -back three and outs to end the half, to begin the half. Good job out of that defense at Olmstead Falls. This is what they need to do. Now they're going to take over with a, well, I'm not going to say short field, but, hey, phenomenal field position. Half the field to go. So not really any movement there for the Eagles. And we got an illegal block, so penalty markers were down, and this is going to move it back for the Bulldogs. So they moved back into their own territory putting it at the 41-yard line, setting up the first and 10. So the Bulldogs, with their first shot on offense of the half, their first drive in the first half, they were able to score and get the two-point conversion, so they put eight up on the board. The Bulldogs will be looking to repeat what they did. Avon looking to hold on to their lead. Siolik keeps it. He's got plenty of room. He avoids a tackler. One guy to beat. He gets past him, and he's going to be pulled down from behind by Colin Kaufman. Siolik was able to, to dodge two tacklers as they were going for the shoestring tackles, and he's going to be down inside the 20, getting to the 16-yard line. What a pickup and keeper by Siolik. And, Cole, we mentioned it to start the night, just how big he is, but for a big kid, he could absolutely move. He showed you again a speed demon. We're going to have to look and find out if he runs track. I mean, just pure jets there by Siolik. Ten minutes here in the third quarter left to go. The handoff to Parkowski up the middle. That is the most space we've seen for Parkowski tonight. And he punches it for about a nine-yard gain. That was a great pickup there. Most open he's been all game for Parkowski. And when I say open, I mean a hole. What a pickup there from Parkowski. And a good job by Siola to, to read that there was some room and hand it off to Parkowski because he had a slot guy coming around, could have easily kept it and pitched it to a slot. Instead, gave it to Parkowski. Great pickup. So now on the eight-yard line, nine and a half minutes left to go. Bulldogs still down by three. Second and two. Siolik, and that should be encroachment. The penalty flies come out. And Siolik, his cadence, must have got the Avon defense jumping. And so Avon backing themselves up into even more of a hole right now. Their backs up against the goal line as they are fighting off the Bulldogs who only have four yards with four opportunities to punch it in the end zone right now. Can't say it enough. You know, you, you close a half with a three and out, and a, or you begin the next half with a three and out. Almost and Falls defense has done their job. Now can the offense cash in? Avon's defense pinching in tight as Parkowski's behind Siolek. The handoff to Parkowski. He barrels forward. He tried to make the effort. It looks like they're going to stop him short, but he got down to the one. That's a three-yard gain, and Parkowski just dropped his helmet, lowered those shoulders, dropped the boom, and nearly made into the end zone. So now second and one, one-yard line, and you're probably going to see 
the goal line package of Avon B out there. They're going to try to do everything they can do because I would not be surprised to see this one go to Parkowski once again. They'll bring the house. Here's a handoff, a push by Parkowski. He was stopped short, but he pushed forward, kept those legs turning, and Andrew Parkowski puts it in for a touchdown. Bulldogs take the lead over Avon, and there you have it. The fullback doing the dirty work, just driving in there, keeping those legs churning, and Avon could not stop him. 24 to 21, and a look here for the PAT. I'll tell you what, Cole Parkowski does not have a ton of yards yet tonight, but he's got two pretty doggone big runs on that two-point conversion and just now. He's making a count when he touches it. Drew Canaba for the PAT. Snap is up, holds good, kick is good. 25 to 24, a four point lead now for the Bulldogs. And these two teams keep going back and forth here in Olmstead Falls. So Avon, not really able to get anything going on their first drive here of the second half, similarly to their first drive of the first half. But in the first half, they were able to really, on that second drive, start to get things figured out, get their rhythm, start to move the ball. We'll see if here in the second half they can do the same on their drive. It's the Bulldogs trying to hold on to their lead that they just picked up once again. And this has again been a game of back and forth. And, you know, I said it already. I had a good feeling about this game coming in. These are two good teams. And this has been an amazing game to this point. And it just looks like it's going to continue that way. And each team matching each other's energy. When one does something, the other responds, and vice versa. It has been pretty great at this point. So Kanaba sets to kick it away. Line drive low, going to skip, and that's going to be an illegal procedure as it goes out of bounds around the 15-yard line, giving a little bit more room. And by rule, that sets it at the 35-yard line for the Eagles. So better field position coming out this time than last time. And we'll see what the Eagles can do. And if the Bulldogs defense can stop them from doing anything and force another three and out. And if they do this time, I'll, I'll take back my words from, from earlier. It would be the biggest three and out if they pull it off again. That's not often Avon goes three straight possessions without a first down. Four receiver set. Hand off to Hunter up the middle. Hunter keeps the legs churning. He quickly got wrapped up, but was able to gain an extra three yards after being touched. It sets up a second and six from the 39-yard line. The hurry-up offense in play for the Eagles. Pappas quickly under the gun. Another handoff up the middle. Quickly brought down was Hunter. He tried to spin away and got gang tackled there by three Bulldogs. Not any room for Hunter. A gain of one, if that, makes it a third and five. And you said a gang tackling is what they wanted to do. We talked with Coach DeLuca pregame. He said he watched them on Saturday Night Live. Then he watched the tape Sunday. They knew what to expect when it came to Hunter. Three receivers on the far side, one on the near side. Pap is pressured. And he tries to throw it away. Ball on the ground. Wait a second and here. And it's picked up. Oh, my God. And they're going to call it a fumble. Pap has tried to make something happen as he was getting wrapped up and tried to throw it away. Instead... It's going to be called a fumble, and the official's trying to work this one out right here. And, Cole, if I get to say, I think that should be an incomplete pass. I know I'm sitting in the home team's press box. I don't want to get hit, but it looked like his arm was going forward. And let's see what the ref says. And so that was number 24, Mally Kilbane, the defensive lineman who got through with the big hit. And this is what I thought, Vince. I thought the arm was going forward. I thought... Here's the thing. The arm was going forward as Pappas was getting close to being down. Uh, he was pretty much on his butt at that point. It looked like he either could have easily been down or that could have easily been intentional grounding as well because yes. nobody was in the area. Yep. Instead, they say he's down. Kick is away off of the punt. Cooney returns it. He fielded it from about the 35. Not much room there. Adds about six or seven yards on the run back. And that's going to be just past the 40-yard line where they're going to be operating with the first and 10 with under seven minutes to go here in the third quarter. And Cole, the, the pressure of the Dogs' defense, let me tell you what they've done to Pappas after that phenomenal start. Nico Pappas, now one for his last 10. That reception only eight yards. One for his last 10 with an interception. They made that adjustment, 
and we're, we're seeing the Bulldogs defense do what they did to Surdock in Midview last week, getting that pressure up the middle, forcing mistakes. And this is the third time we see an eagle down here tonight. Hopefully this is just another cramp, as it seemed like the other two were as well. We're going to take a quick injury timeout, and we'll be right back with more coverage of Avon at North Olmstead. And we're back following the injury timeout as the Eagles player was up and able to walk off the field on his own power. Still on the far side, waiting for him to get off the field. But the defense is set up for the Eagles. The offense is set up for the Bulldogs. And the officials are gathering. Playing beanbag toss. Yep. Ah, one, of the many, one of the many funds of 2020, Cole. Yeah, exactly. The 15 yard beanbag toss from the, the back official. We're, we're a game and a half into this. So I can't get used to it, but it is what it is. So it takes the pitch out to Conti. Conti on the far side. He cuts inside. He gets past the first down. And that will be a gain of 12. I'll tell you what, Siola does a great job at reading the defense. He knows when to keep it, he knows when to pitch it. He knows this triple option offense in and out. He, he does a great job with it. It's been outstanding and I, from I, the junior quarterback. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I feel a big Rocco Conti play coming on here. I just do. And we said, he, you know, Sielek reminds me of Teddy Krasinski in so many ways with that vision. Six and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. The pitch from Sielek to Fiskanich. And that is a gain of up to close to five. Now ball on the 41. So we saw a pitch to Conti going to the far side of the field. That one to Fiskanich here on the near side of the field. Trying to open up that Avon defense. And once they get them spread out a little bit, watch for that run up the middle again. But right now, the pitch to the outside is working as the Eagles are having a tough time setting the edge on these last couple plays. The fake pitch. See, look, he's got a, a guy wide open. No, no, he finds Cooney, and Cooney drops it. And I have to say, number three, Ryan Potosik did a great job recovering and punching that ball out because that one could have easily been a touchdown. Cooney had a big reception that just slipped out of his hand, but Potosik, you have to give the DB the credit as he punched that one away. Yeah, Ryan Potosik, he would not be listed, you know, as a, as a starter. But I'll tell you what, he's going to come in and make some plays. It's an unbelievable job. And, you know, Cole, we've seen Potosik make a couple tonight. Yeah. We have. That was it, though. If Homestead Falls could have caught that, that would have been huge. Third and six from the 41. The pitch. Oh, and a move. And he gets to the first down. It looks like that is number 11, Jack Pinchek. It looked like he was going to be brought down just short. He made a move and got up close to the first down marker. They're going to mark it right next to the marker. We're going to see from the tip of the ball. Well, they're going to say five, and it's going to be fourth and inches now. They are going to say fourth and inches. So it says fourth and one on the scoreboard. It's a lot closer than that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the tip of the ball, Cole. And so here we go. I would assume this is either going to be a sneak up the middle or this is going to be handed off. And it is. Parkowski. It's the big man. The big man punches forward. And just like that touchdown we saw just a couple minutes ago, he got hit right at the line, but he kept those legs churning, and he kept moving forward. Great call there by the Bulldogs, and Tom DeLuca's team is playing with some in, <laughs> some energy. They're looking good right now. Under five minutes left to go, 25 to 21. Fakes the handoff. Siolik rolling off to the left-hand side. He's got to fight to get back to the marker, and it looks like he was able to pick up a couple yards. He got pushed back about five yards and had to bounce it back. Good job to regain those yards and gain a couple. Siolik trying to move those chains. 
Yeah, as he's done a good job running this offense as they've been trying to move forward. He's done a good job of pitching it, like yeah. we mentioned. He's done a good job of, of reading what the defense has given him that time there. He made two Not bad much. passes right at defenders. Other than that, he's been perfect. Pretty much. Here's the handoff to the far side, bouncing out to the far side is number 25, Michael Kando. And Kando up again, close to the first down marker. A good pick up there. Sets up a third down. Ball on the 28. And I'll tell you what, that was a lot of running to only be given yeah. three or four yards on the pickup there. We've seen Pappas on, on the other side of the ball do that numerous times tonight. Just keep getting around that edge. A lot of east and west yes. running, not north and south. I agree. Crucial third down here. Seolik keeps it, fakes the pitch, and that one he got caught up in between, and he wanted to pitch that one off to Charlie Jack Pinchek. That was taken off by the outside linebacker. Good job by the Eagles defense there. So that one really well played. And he was smart to hold on to that ball. That you know, we've already praised him numerous times tonight for not panicking. And he just showed us why there because it looked for a second he was almost gonna try to overhand pitch it. Thought better of it. That could have been a disaster if they could have fumbled it here. From the 29 yard line with a fourth and five, we're in no man's territory, a little bit too long for a field goal too close to punt, so they're going to go with it on fourth down. Seal like back to pass. He looks to the far side and nearly intercepted in and out of the hands of the Avon defender. And honestly, for the Eagles, it's better that they did not catch that one because they're about to get better field position off of the turnover uh, on fourth down rather than if they would have intercepted that and been back around the 15-yard line. And for you fans out there wondering, that would have been about a 47-yard field goal attempt for Drew Canava. So I agree with Cole in the agreement that going for it was smart. Yeah, and Kanaba, we've seen his decent leg. He's been accurate, but I've seen off of his kickoffs a lot's been low in line drive. If his field goal comes off like that, it might have a hard time clearing from about 47. I agree. So the offense of the Eagles back out on the field. Pappas. Pappas takes the ball and hands it off to Hunter. Hunter barrels up forward. And falls forward for about six yards. Second and four, ball in the 35. The offense, they've, they've done a good job balancing between the hurry up as well as taking their time to get the play calls in. We see them go quickly at times. We've seen them slow it down. Pappas has done a good job controlling that as well as the coaching staff. Pappas hands it off to Hunter. Hunter breaks a couple tackles. He gets to the far sideline and just pulled down from behind. Didn't look like he was going to get that many yards off of that, but when he broke that tackle and got around to the outside, he gained an extra 20 yards following that, and he is now down in Bulldogs territory about the 30-yard line. Yeah, I mean, almost about a 37, 38 yard rumble there for Devon Hunter. 36, they're going to stand the clock there. 2.58 to go. Pappas hands it off, and rumbling forward is Desmond Kelly. We haven't really seen him since the first half. We've seen him sub in a couple times for Hunter, that time keeping the legs churning, and a nice gain on first down to pick up another first down. Ball down at the 15-yard line, first and 10. Just over two and a half minutes left to go here in the third quarter. Bulldogs maintain a four-point lead over the Eagles. Eagles knocking on the door. Handoff and a gain of maybe one by Kelly there. And this game has lived up to its billing. I mean, Kelly's another big boy on Avon. They're going big out there. But he rumbled forward. Great wrap-up tackle by Olmstead Falls. And as we've said, all game long, I mean, if they need to tackle the knees, they're doing it. If they need to tackle the ankles, they're doing it. If they need to do a wrap-up shoulder tackle, they're doing it. Olmstead Falls has put themselves in a position tonight, tackling, strictly tackling-wise, to get it done accurately for the most part. Pappas gets the snap, hands it off. Hunter once again breaks a couple tackles, barrels forward, and that is another big pickup there. That's going to make it first and goal after picking up the first down. And here you see that hurry up offense. Cole, we had six scores in the first half. We've had one in this quarter. Hand off to Hunter, bouncing off to the left hand side, barreling forward. It looks like he just got stood up at the one yard line as he was stretching out. Could not quite make it, but now he's at the one. It's going to set up a second and goal 
a minute and a half left to go here in the third. Here's that hurry up offense again. Three receivers to the near side of the field. Pappas with Hunter to his right. Hands it off and stuck. So no movement there. The Bulldogs able to stand strong with their backs up against the goal line. Third and goal from the one now. After the 65-yard touchdown run by Hunter, it's been runs of 1, 3, 1, 5, 37, 10, 2, and 1. Pappas with Hunter to his right. Now they're taking some time. They are taking some time now. We're under a minute here in the third quarter. Hunter still to Pappas' his right. Pa Hunter, lead blocker, Pappas, tries to run, and he gets stopped. That is number 33, the fullback and inside linebacker, Andrew Parkowski. He has he does it all. great. He does it all. He came in there, and he was able to get around the lead blocker, Hunter, and that was a great job talk tackling Pappas. Took him down by the legs. Fourth and goal from the one. Do you go for it right here? I'd say kill the clock. Decided in the fourth quarter. So I think you could. No, I'm sorry. I'm wrong. Only nine seconds on the play clock. You got to run a play. Absolutely have to go for it right now. Down to five. Four. Snap is off. Trying to push and get to it. It stops. The Bulldogs defense stands strong. Right at the end of the third quarter. The Bulldogs maintain their four-point lead over the Eagles. Wow. 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 We're right next to the, the coach's box. Those guys are going nuts for good reason. Unbelievable. I tell you what, they have shown just nerves of steel tonight. That Bulldog defense got down early, and I'll tell you what, they got that three and out to end the first half. Since then, they have been absolute nails. And you can't blame Elder there for going for it. I would have too. Oh, absolutely. That situation? I think any coach goes for that one, especially you're down by four. You're a yard away. You have to go for it, especially when you have – a big offensive line that's done a pretty good job opening up holes. You got a tough running back. You got a quarterback who can run. It makes sense that they would go for it. So now taking over possession, we're going to get one more play here in the third quarter. The Bulldogs setting up in their own end zone because that stop happened on the one. The pitch over to Conti, and he gains about two or three yards just to clear some space. And that is the end of the third quarter. So at the end of the third quarter here on Keon Sports. The North Olmstead Bulldogs hosting the Avon Eagles have a 25 to 21 lead. After that huge stop, they're backed up and trying to force their way out and uh, try to go the length of the field to make it a two score game. We're going to take a really quick break here as we're going into the fourth quarter. Again, you're listening to Keon Sports. I'm Cole McDaniel alongside Vince McKee. We'll be right back. And as we come back here, as we start the fourth quarter, we're going all the way to the opposite side of the field. That Conti pitch, the officials marked that one. It's pretty much just about a one, one and a half yard gain, which puts the ball on the two. So we are going 96 yards completely in the opposite directions. We're completely flipping sides of the field. We got a second and nine as we're going to start this quarter for the Bulldogs offense. And Cole, can I say, you know, when I did that petition, because I wanted everybody to, to know we needed fall football, this is the reason why. Nights like tonight, this game. So, like, passing from his end zone. He's got Cooney wide open. He finds him at the 35, and Cooney falls forward after being tackled from behind. Mark him at the 40-yard line. Cooney had a big drop, a possession to go, just made up for it. And talk about the – your own end zone. Wow. I think I've said that a lot tonight. This game has been wow the whole time. Yeah. Not, only, not only passing from your own end zone, but they didn't go with the old Freddie Kitchens play action fake out of their own end zone either. <laughs> Max protect and let it rip. What a game. So now from the 40 yard line, first and 10, 
the pitch out to Pinchek. Pinchek makes some moves and he's going to get up to about the 48 yard line, make it a second and two. So the first two plays have been very positive for the Bulldogs here as we start this fourth quarter. Siolik under center. Parkowski with his hand in the dirt behind him. Fakes the handoff. Siolik decides to keep it. Looked like he definitely wanted to pitch that one off to number 29, Michael Kandau, but he did not because he saw the outside linebacker coming in and sealing off that edge. Another good decision to keep that one. No gain, but they keep a hold of the football, which is most important. Down to 10 and a half minutes here, fourth quarter, Yeah, third and two. And, and Cole, if I could say it too, even if they don't get a first down here, they've still gotten out of their own end zone. Right. They flipped the field. Absolutely. That's, that's the most important thing. Siolik keeps it, and he's going to get wrapped up. his stripped. We got scrambled for the loose ball, and it's jumped on by Avon. What a play by the Avon defense as they were able to strip that one away by from Siolik. So Avon quickly turns that around right after you said flipping the field. Not much of flipping the field because that ball got stripped out. It flew back about 15 yards towards the Bulldogs' end zone. Lucky for the Bulldogs that a couple of their linemen were quick to notice that and quickly got back and were able to uh, get there and make sure that Avon wasn't able to just scoop and score. One hell of a strip. Well, I mean, the Avon Eagles are, are uh, they're one of the best teams in the state for a reason. They're never out of a game. Yeah, and you have to say the Solmstead Falls team, definitely a really solid team as well. These are two great teams just battling it out and going for it. So now both teams have lost a fumble here on the night. Here's a handoff to Hunter up the middle. Quickly wrapped up. Going to make it a second and nine. Ball on the 34-yard line. Again, we want to thank everybody for joining us. We see all the very nice comments there in the message boards. Thank you so much for your support and your kind words here on KeonSports.com. Quick pass out on the far sideline. Number 27, Cam Erskine. I haven't really called his name much you, lately. You, you took the words out of my mouth. I was just about to say, after an early 19-yard catch, he's been quiet. Catches of 1-1 one, one, and now finally 7. Pappas on third and nine. And they were going to say that that catch was incomplete and out of bounds. Never so third, third and nine, still from the 34. Again, it was on the far sideline. Hard to see if he got his feet in. They said he did not. So Pappas back in the gun, looking down the middle of the field into tight coverage. Got him that and time. And we got a completion as he does find number 27, Cam Erskine. Two defenders tight on that. Great hands by Erskine to pull that in. Instant redemption for Erskine. First down Eagles at the 21. Two receivers on the far side, two on the near side. Hunter to the left of Pappas. Gets the snap, delivers a low strike. I thought he dropped it, but they're going to say he caught it. And Erskine pulls that one in. Erskine had to get down quickly. He was able to pull that in, makes it a second and five. That's my least favorite spot of the entire field, Cole. That far corner right there. And we've got a Bulldog checking out. Did it look like you look he dropped it to me? It looked like he did. I didn't think he dropped it. It definitely was low. I do think he got his hands under it. But, of course, in high school football, we don't have, you know, review. Nope. So, got to go with what the official saw down there. And I do think the official on the far side was close, and he did have a good look at it. Yep. So, second and five from the 16, under nine minutes to go. Pappas. Receiver motions to the left. The handoff up the middle. Barreling forward, gets it, some help from the offensive line for another extra couple yards. That will move the chains now down inside the 10-yard line to set up a first and goal for the Eagles. Three receiver set to the left. There's the clap. 
turn and look to the sideline. Eagles taking their time to get this play in. Nine seconds on the play clock. Gets the snap off. The slant touchdown. is delivered. It's complete, and it is in Eagles touchdown as he finds the senior wide receiver, number one, Michael Potosik. So that nine-yard touchdown throw, Pappas to Potosik, now gives the Eagles the lead. Again, back and forth this game continues to go. 27 to 25, Eagles an opportunity to extend it to a three-point lead here with their PAT. Vakos kick is up, and it's good once again. Vakos remains perfect on the night on his PATs for four for four. 28 to 25 is your score. Eight minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. Vince, we have a game. We've been saying it all night, and it just has not changed. It has been back and forth, blow for blow. And again, I know what you love. You love wrestling and fighting comments. So here's a yeah. boxing one. This has been two heavyweights trading punches back and forth. Absolutely slugging it out. And as I have it in front of me, I grabbed it for a reason. This game, since the initial 8 nothing lead, has never been more than four or five points apart. We've had 8-7, 14-8, 15-14, 18-14, 21-18, 25-21, and now 28-25. Guys, if that is not one versus two, I don't know what it is. These are two teams to watch out for for the rest of the season. For anybody coming in their path, they play tough phys physical football. They're different teams. They have different styles, but... They are tough, and we are seeing it here tonight in resilient. And I think everybody's had to have some resilience, resiliency coming into this season. Not only do you always have to have that on the field, but especially with the practices, with how everything's changed, waiting for the schedule. Oh, yeah, you didn't know what's happening week, week to week. Absolutely. How do you prepare? I mean, even Elder told me that. Elder and DeLuca both said it. The kick is up. It's away. Conti fields it in the end zone. Once again, a fair catch. And we have seen quite a few touchbacks here, which means that Olmstead Falls will once again be setting up from their own 20-yard line. And guys, you know, uh, Cole just said it, you know, slugger's battle comes down to the end. Battle two phenomenal heavyweights, whatever cliche you want to use. And again, look, just look at these scores. 8 to nothing, 8 to 7, 14 to 8, 15 to 14, 18 to 14, 21 to 18, 25 to 21, 28 to 25. This is the game where you do not get up to grab something out of the fridge. Still over eight minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. Plenty of time. No need to panic right now. Just run your offense if your Olmstead falls. The fake pitch rolling to the right. Siolik finds Conti. Conti makes a man miss. Stays on his feet. And he gets forward in that one. Two flags on that play. Both exactly. are going to be on Avon. So you saw the one official. He threw his flag here on the near side. It's going to be on Avon. And then a grab of the face mask. And so you saw that same Officials hat come off. So two flags as Vince McKee called it here. So after that 12 yard pickup on the pass play, we wait to see what the officials have to say. And there will be a respotting of the ball most certainly here after they end their discussion. So the two penalties going against Avon, as we mentioned. Couldn't come at a more perfect time for Olmstead Falls. Big time. And we mentioned it early on tonight. Avon, very, very few penalties, but they picked a bad time there to have back to backs. So Olmstead Falls marches their way forward. How is that only 10 yards? I thought unnecessary roughness or personal fouls. Is that supposed to be 15? I'm not sure on the spot of this at all. It, it should be 15 yards from where the kid went out of bounds, but okay. So it is up to the 42-yard line, first and 10. And we, there we go, another penalty by Avon. A flinch, a jump off sides. That's going to be encroachment, a five-yard penalty. That was number 83. Very uncharacteristic. So number 83 is Austin Mitchell on the Avon defense. Just caught him jumping there. Got a little too antsy. So a short down here. First and five on the 47 for the Bulldogs. They keep marching forward off of penalties. The handoff on the middle and absolutely blown up. 
Wow, so into the game was number five, Clay Vormelker, the fullback. He got rocked by the linebacker there. I believe that was number 35, which looks to be Trevor Norman was the first to deliver the blow. Yeah, Trevor Norman's a beast. Unbelievable. He he, he made uh, Vormelker feel that in his feelings. Just crushed him. So a gain of two, though. Avon's deep at linebacker. And off up the middle, Andrew Parkowski, the man who can do it all at inside linebacker as well as fullback. He just barrels forward, and I'm pretty sure you hand that ball off to him and you're never taking a loss because he always seems to at least get back to the line of scrimmage. It's unbelievable. Not tonight. Four, two, five, eight, three, two, one, and five. Never minus yet. So now ball onto Eagles territory at the 46-yard line. Six and a half minutes left to go. Hand off up the middle. Parkowski once again picks up a couple yards. And this is actually where that play by Vormelker actually helps because it gave Parkowski a quick blow to get his breath back, get him right back in that game. I mean, Vormelker had to take a hit for it, but look, first down right after that. Pinchak, Kandal, Feskinich, Conti, Siolik, Parkowski, Vormelker. They are just so deep at when they want to run the ball. Yeah, so many guys touch the ball on the run. Siolik. Back to pass. He finds Conti wide open. Conti tries to make a guy miss. He slips the tackle. He moves to the right. He gets to the middle. He bounces off another tackler, and he gets inside the 25-yard line. Mark him down close to the 21. Conti is hard to bring down. He is slippery and physical in the slot. Who I'll tell you what, he, he not only is a slot receiver, catches some balls, he gets a lot on the sweeps, the pitches there. He touches the ball a lot, and the guy can play football. He is a good football player. It's unbelievable. I mean, his he's got hands of glue out there. You don't see him even bobble that. And like you said, no, you got a, a, a fullback that big all, or a halfback that big all the way down the field. You're just trying to stop him. It ain't going to happen. The handoff to Parkowski. He rolls to the right-hand side. He's got a block, and he gets down, shot down by the ankles at the 11-yard line. Markowski, usually see him barreling right up the middle. You saw his vision there as he decided to go off to the right-hand side where the space was. And the big man rumbled down close to the 10. And here's the thing, Cole. I know Holmes said Falls wants the touchdown. Their parents want the touchdown. If, for any reason, they have to settle for a field goal here that's not the end of the world, a Canaba field goal would tie the game. However, first down and 10, a field goal is on nobody's mind right now. They want six. Still plenty of time on the clock here. Over five minutes to go. Again, you're listening to Key on Sports on KeyOnSports.com, as well as on Podbean. I'm Cole McDaniel alongside Vince McKee. The handoff to Parkowski. He's rumbling down inside the five. And he's down to the two-yard line. Parkowski once again barreling forward. And I think what you've seen is some of those pitches, some of that passing has kind of had the Eagles have to drop back a little bit, spread out, and that middle has been wide open for Parkowski. It wasn't in the first half, but has been lately. Now another handoff to Parkowski. Gets the push forward. He's got to be in. There's the single. He's in. The Bulldogs take the lead at home. We keep going back and forth and back and forth. Olsen falls once again with the lead, 31-28, to an opportunity to make it a four-point game, depending on the – Kanaba kick. So four minutes, nearly four and a half minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. Kanaba coming out for the PAT. He's been perfect on his PAT attempts as well in this game. So right now, a field goal would tie it for Avon unless Kanaba knocks this up through the uprights. Hold is good, and the kick is good. We got a flag. We got a penalty marker here at the back. We'll see what the officials say here. I'll tell you what, for Avon, this was a horrible drive when it came to penalties. A lot of penalties, and it's going to go against Avon. So the kick is good. Avon needs a touchdown to take the lead. A field goal would put them a point short. 
That's a big PAT there from Kanaba and the Bulldogs. And Cole, how big now? Here we are, two hours later, what it's ever been. You know, two hours later, how big is it now that they went for that two point conversion at the beginning of the game? Massive. Huge. Tell you what, it makes Coach Tom DeLuca look like a genius right wow. now. I mean, that's unbelievably foreshadowing that. Yeah, the whole coaching staff looking looking like geniuses right now for going for that two-point conversion and converting there on that opening drive. Because that, that's the difference maker. Because all Avon would need to do with over three minutes stuff to go is go down there, get in field goal range, take a field goal, take it to overtime. They can't do that now because of that two-point conversion, which is crucial. So, again, four-point lead for the Bulldogs, and they're about to be kicking away. And that penalty will be assessed on the kickoff which means Canaba will be kicking from the Eagles' 45-yard line. Expect this one to sail into the end zone. Do they go for an onside kick here and shock the world? I would say if you're kicking this this far, you try to, try to put it down there. Yep. The thing is, is if you're blessed with that penalty by the Eagles, take advantage of it. I agree. I was getting a little greedy. Put, put the Eagles around the 20-yard line. That's the right thing to do. So now, four minutes, 40 seconds left to go. Here in the fourth quarter, in Olmstead Falls. Big matchup. Again, Vince mentioned it earlier. Avon, highly ranked in the state. Olmstead Falls pulls off this victory. You know, Olmstead Falls is going to be climbing up the ranks. Quickly. He, very quickly. Pappas. Back. Deep throw to Erskine. On the far sideline, he gets his feet in. That's a first down. Move the chains. And he's shown that several times tonight has Cam Erskine, his ability to tiptoe along those sidelines. We've seen it twice already tonight. Pappas, real quick, Cole. Pappas starting to heat up again. That he is. Pappas has had some times where he's been a little hot and cold tonight, gone on a little stretch where he's at found his receivers, and then completion, completion, completion. Right now, he's on a hot streak. Here's the handoff to Hunter. Hunter rumbling forward to nearly the first down. Looks like he's just going to be short. And no, they're going to give him the extra. It looked like about a nine-and-a-half-yard gain. I don't see him moving the chains yet. Official on the near side pointed his left arm, giving him the spot. Now they're moving. And there the chains do move. So it looks like pretty good spot, a little generous there. But the Eagles, that won't matter to them as they are driving right now. Now in opponent's territory at the 47 handoff. Once again up the middle, Hunter rumbling, spins out of a tackle, and gets pulled down from behind. And we got an injured Bulldog down. And I'll tell you what, too, Cole, they're doing this quick. They've, they've used less than 40 seconds. They've legit gone all the way down the field here in 36 seconds. They're moving quick. The clock stops after every play because first down stops the clock. Um, I mean, they've now gone, you know, if my math is correct, that's almost 50 yards in 36 seconds. Unbelievable. Yeah, and the number 34, Marcus Criswell, he did a good job making that tackle. Went down awkwardly on that ankle on his leg. We're going to take a quick injury timeout here on Keon Sports. Once again, I'm Cole McDaniel, Vince McKee. We'll be right back in just a few seconds. And we're back out of that injury timeout. Chriswell was able to get up, get off the field. We're back in action. First and 10 on the 33. It's a handoff once again and quickly read and quickly stopped. That's a big stop there by Hunter, too, because he's coming off runs of 10, 6, 10, 13. That's really the first time they've stopped him behind the line of scrimmage almost all night. Number 24, Mally Kilbane was the first one in the backfield to stop Hunter there, making it his second 11 from the 34. And that runs the clock for the first time in this drive. Down to three and a half minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. Two receivers to the left-hand side, two to the right-hand side. Hunter switches over from Pappas's right to his left. Pappas gets the snap, looks to the right-hand side, a quick slant. Erskine. Completed to Erskine. Erskine, tell you what, Pulled that one in in the first quarter. Went quiet. 
here in the fourth, he has been a big factor. Quickly getting back to the line, Avon trying to move as quickly as possible. Here's the snap and the handoff. Quickly red. And that off the, the edge. That was the clock. Great tackle. Good job by the outside linebackers of Olmstead Falls reading that one. So we're under three minutes now. Bulldogs still with the four-point lead, 32 to 28. If you're just checking into this game, you're checking in at the right time. We've got a tight one down to two and a half minutes now. The handoff. Got Hunter it. barrels forward. And it looks like he is going to get the first down off of that gain of three. And I'll tell you what, as I look out into this crowd, it is packed on the Olmstead Falls sign. You know, we a lot of people were worried of what was the atmosphere going to be like tonight. This atmosphere is amazing. Olmstead Falls fans, take your hats off. Phenomenal job. I tip my hat to you. I don't know what I'm saying. I tip my hat to you. Phenomenal. You can take your hats off too. But <laughs> phenomenal job. Timeout. So we do have a timeout. And with this timeout on the field, this has been electric. This We couldn't ask for much more coming back to football. You know, we had a good time being back out last yep. week. Then we get around to this week. we got a huge game coming in here. We have beautiful weather. Just a wonderful game coming right down to the end. And, you know, I have no idea where this game is going to go, how this is going to turn. Again, Olmstead falls with that four-point lead. The chains are coming out. They're trying to spot this ball. Whoa. And they mark it. He got it. And he Wait. got it by a football length wow. on how they marked it. So the chain gang will head off, and Avon will get I first down gonna, here. I thought he was going to keep pulling. I'm like, that's a terrible spot. No, that's good. It's on the money. And that stops the clock for Avon there. Gives him a break. Who so, called for that? DeLuca must have called for the spot. He, the falls. he must have. So two receivers to the left, two receivers to the right. We've seen that a lot here from Avon lately. The handoff to Hunter. Actually, no, he pulled it back. Oh, and Pappas decided not to give it to Hunter and instead took the punishment well read by the Bulldogs. And honestly, Hunter probably would have been stopped early, but that was one where he probably should have handed that off because I think he lost another two yards because of keeping it himself. Again, the Bulldogs defense showing their physicality and backing up the Eagles. So now we got a second and 13 from the 26. Pappas rolling up. He gives a scramble. He gets up the middle. Yeah. A lot of contact. Avon got away with a holding call there big time. Big time call. Holding on Avon. No call. They did. And I think you are right, Vince. I think they missed that. The officials, I think, overall have done a pretty good job well, tonight, but there have been a couple things they have missed, as you see in about every game. Yeah. I mean, they, they say you could call holding on every single play, but that was that was kind of blatant. Here we go, third and five, Cole. This is big. We don't have to go. As Ben said, at third and five on the 18-yard line, a minute and a half to go. Pappas back, looks to his left. The dump down to Hunter. Hunter got lots of room, and he walks into the end zone untouched. And the Eagles take a lead. Still a minute and 15 seconds left on the clock. Left in the game here in the fourth quarter. Avon now with that lead. But this is, again, where we talked about that two-point conversion comes into play huge mm -hmm. here. If Avon does convert here, it will make it 35-32. to 32. The Bulldogs, all they'd have to do is get into field goal territory. And then Kanaba can maybe go out there and try to tie it up, take this to overtime. But right now, first, re Vakas, first reception of the game, too, by Hunter. Yeah, first reception of the game, a touchdown reception. Here's Vakas. Hold was good. Kick was good. 35 to 32 as the Eagles now have the lead. And the punches continue to be thrown here in Olmstead Falls. Again, I'm Cole McDaniel alongside me, Vince McKee, tonight my broadcast partner. If you were just tuning in or if you stayed with us all night, thank you for being with us. This has been a great game. We continue to bring you coverage here on Keon Sports. Just a reminder as well, if your team is not being covered on Keon Sports, there's a possibility they might be live on Keon Sports Elite, our new coverage team out there, Brandon SP, as well as Mike Rogers, as they will also be bringing a live game each Friday, just as we will be doing. Also, check out Twitter, where we will have updates 
from our reporters out there at some games. They'll put some video as well. So make sure to pay attention to live score updates from them. And Cole, I want to give a, a shout out to Cam Erskine there. As you said, a slow, it had a big cut early and then a slow since then. But really on those drives, those last drive there, 12, 5, 27, 11, Erskine getting it done when it's needed the most right now. And Avon able to get it done when they need it the most as a team. That drive took over four minutes. A lot of time off the clock. But still a minute and 15 seconds left to go for the Bulldogs. And the kick goes through the end zone. That one's going to be coming out to the 20. I'll tell you what, Nathaniel Vakos has been consistent on launching that ball into the end zone. He's got a boot. Definitely a big boot. Also, guys, real quick, too, uh, you could, it will be announced later this week on Keon Sports, but if you've looked ahead, you already know, me and Cole will be in Avon Lake next week and next Friday night as the Shoreman host the Midview Middies. As the current scores stand with Midview and Amherst, it looks like the uh, Middies might be 0-2, and the Shoreman will be 1-1 -on -one as they are blasting Bremen Park as we speak. Cole, take us away. Here we go. And Selick under center. They got a drive to try to get back in this game. Pass off the far side and intercepted by the Eagles. That one might end up wrapping up this game. We got a minute and nine seconds left to go, but that one was well read and picked off. Number 29, Jackson Blodgett was the one who intercepted that. And that could close out the game for the Eagles. Hey, you know, we said it earlier, the kid is so talented. He could tackle, he could sack, he could stop the run, he could pass cover. There's nothing Jackson Blodgett couldn't do, and he showed you just now. Well, and Blodgett did a great job reading the quarterback's eyes, and you know, Selick has uh, definitely passed the ball more today than he did last week. He hardly threw the ball. It was mostly just ground game. He's done a pretty good job throwing today. That one stared down his receiver. Blodgett dropped into coverage from his outside linebacker position easily pick that one off. And that was really the first major mistake Seelix had all night. It wasn't his it fault. Is. He fumbled. He got stripped. Anybody would have got stripped. But right. That was a mistake. And so here the Bulldogs defense has to come up big. Pappas keeps it. Nice wrap-up tackle there. Again, Kilbane in the backfield. A little shaken up, though, after that tackle. Down to a minute left in this game as we have this injury timeout. We're going to take a very quick break, but don't go away. We've got the conclusion of this game with a minute left. Still the Eagles with a three-point lead. And the Bulldogs trying to find a way back in this right at the end of the fourth quarter. We'll be right back here on Keon Sports. And as we come back from this break, Kilbane up, walking off the off to the sideline. So as we come back on to the field, the Eagles again trying to close this one out, but they're backed up right now. Second and fifteen from the twenty-five, the handoff. Hunter breaks some tackles. And barreling towards the first down marker. Looks like he's going to be just shy. But that is some good hard nose running there from Hunter right when they needed him. Because all they really need is a first down here. And they just, from second and 15, got close to getting it. So that will now be third. About two, maybe? Two or three? It looked like it was about third and three is what they're going to put. And they're going to mark him at third and three. So ball is now on the 13. So three yards is all Avon really needs to be able to close this game out. We got a timeout on the field. Quick timeout. Avon over 
You have coaching staff getting their play call here. I would assume a run up the middle here. Bulldogs better be ready for it because it's probably going to go into the hands of Hunter once again. 55 seconds left to go here in the fourth quarter. It is Hunter. Hunter pushes forward, and he is going to get the first down. Looks like it. They're going to measure this. A game this close, they'll measure it, but I think he got it. He looks like he's right at the first down marker. It's going to be close. I wouldn't be surprised to see the chain game come yeah, out yeah. and that they are. They're about to measure. And it's better safe than sorry in this situation. So down to 50 seconds here in what's been an amazing game here in Olmstead Falls. And again, while we have this break in the action, guys, I want to remind you, we are definitely looking for sponsors right now. Email me, Vince McKee, at CoachVin14 at Yahoo.com. Thank you, T-Mart, for sharing our live show, by the way. And thank you, everybody, who has shared this broadcast tonight. We are honored to be here in Olmstead Falls. Uh, Cole McDaniel and myself absolutely love doing this for you guys. Let us know. Keep it going. Keyonsports.com. We need sponsorships. We got all kinds of specials running right now. We know uh, businesses are suffering from the KVOD 19, and we want to go ahead and we want to make things a little bit better for you. Email me, Vince McKee, at coachvin 14 at yahoo.com and the silence just fell over the crowd as the chain gang did measure it was a first down and now the eagles are just going to take a knee to try to run out this clock here so as the clock is running it's approaching 30 seconds down to 11 on the play clock probably going to snap it around two they decide to snap it now and that is going to do it Wow, I'll tell you what, this has been a game. We had a close matchup tonight, a three-point game, and you can almost call Avon through two weeks the comeback kings in some yeah, ways I'd because so. they have, uh, you know, usually you hear comeback kids, but this is a, a highly ranked program. They're referred to as a top-tier group, and they went down big to Avon Lake. They marked back last weekend. This time, they needed a drive at the end to put points on the board. They did just that and came back here on the road against Olmstead Falls. Yep. We want to wish both teams uh, good luck next week uh, in, in your efforts out there and playing. And we're excited to uh, continue to cover not only SWC football, but football over the conference. But again, Cole, just to kind of wrap up your point there, you know, I agree with you. We talked about it all day today. We talked about it last night, several phone calls this week. We just had that feeling. We had that feeling tonight was going to be special. It lived up to the hype, no doubt about it. Nobody knew who was going to win all the way throughout the game as it went. As we said, that the biggest differential was four points, and that was only before, because Coach Tom DeLuca wanted to go for, you know, a two-point conversion. After the initial 8-0, you know, score from 